Thanks. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Town Council meeting for June 4th, the Harvey Hearing Room. It is a little after 7. Sorry about the delay. Um, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Council of Auditorium, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, please call the roll. Councilor Ingman. Here. Councilor Callow. Present. Councilor Christopher. Here. Councilor Boncori. Here. Councilor Lucerto. Councilor Farino. Here. Councilor Conti. Present. Vice President Lettieri. Yeah. President Vecchio. Present. Thank you. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the May 21st Town Council meeting. So moved. We are a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. And abstain, please. Aye. One abstention. Public comment. Wow. No public comment. Don't ask for it. Wow. I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the gentleman. Very good. 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 I have nothing political to say. Okay. I'm just very thankful and proud of this town for the amount of great parents, kids, Parks and Rec. Sean Driscoll deserves a shout out. I'm impressed with this turnout, and this is a great town to raise kids in. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Hearing none, we'll go to general information and recommendations. And the first item is, is the recognition of the Parks and Recs program. Sean um, approached us not too long ago, and he said, you know, we have a great program. Of course, he does... Him and the staff do a phenomenal job for the young people of this community, keeping the kids off the street, keeping them safe while you folks are working or whatever. So uh, Sean suggested that we recognize the kids uh, that did some outstanding uh, performances in basketball, I guess fifth graders and seventh graders, boys and girls. So Sean, if you just kind of just give us an overview of the, of the, of the program and Sure. Maybe recognize the coaches? Yeah, so every year yeah. for the last 18 years or so, we've had a travel basketball league. And uh, we have anywhere between 8 to 11 teams. This year we had 9 teams. We had 4 North Shore winners. 5th uh, grade girls, 5th grade boys, 7th grade girls, and 7th grade boys. First time it's ever happened. Um, and it's a tribute to the kids for putting the time in and the effort. The coaches that volunteer their time, and it's a lot of hours, a lot of traveling, a lot of weekends, a lot of going up to Danvers Indoor Sports. Uh, a couple of years ago, there were games in New Hampshire. But with that said, it, it couldn't get done without, without the parents shuttling them from one sport to the other, from school and making the practices. And one of the biggest resources we had, and what's turned our program into a successful program, uh, was I was saying to the parents in the gym tonight as we had a little uh, meeting at the gym and took pictures in front of the championship banners and had some pizzas and water talked about that gym down there and it was important to the success because of the time we had for them to prepare uh, and, the, and the extra gym time they got to have for the playoffs. Anytime you go deep in the march in that program, you know you're having a lot of success and all our teams had some success. But these four really stood out and I, uh, again, I appreciate all their efforts, uh, the kids, the parents and the coaches. Um, fifth grade girls coach who was with me first time, as soon as he walked in my door, he had a lot of excitement about wanting to do it. We talked to him, interviewed him, uh, is Eric Ferguson. He's a, he's a great guy. He's out there now holding the kids at bay. Um, <laughs> fifth grade boys coach has been for a bunch of times. He won actually two championships, and he does two or three teams. Actually, he does anything that you need him to do. He's always stepping up to the plate, and that's Aaron Daniel. Okay. Um, on the seventh grade side, we got the um, seventh grade girls, and uh, it's a special group. It's a special team and hopefully they all stay together. And that's Derek Broden. Uh, he, did, he did a phenomenal job uh, in the Division II level, one of the highest levels that we have. And on um, seventh grade boys, uh, you wouldn't be surprised if you know anything about basketball in town, you know the Ciotis name has a lot to do with it. Uh, Nick Ciotis, he's been doing it, he's won it two out of three years with the, same, with the same group for the most part. And he works hard and spends a lot of time and he's as we all know, very active in the community, and, uh, and I'm very happy to get those guys to help out and volunteer. It's unpaid, and you also deal with a lot of stuff, too, not only on the, on the court, but outside the court, and trying to manage different events. So, with that said, we want to bring the fifth grade the yes. first, fifth grade girls. Fifth grade girls, Eric.
congratulations, ladies. I'm going to read a citation. You're all going to receive a citation. Your name will be announced by our, our um, counselor here that's into sports himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty deeply. I'm going to read you a citation that you're going to all receive, okay? The Town of Winthrop Town Council citation. Be it known to all that the Winthrop Town Council hereby offers its congratulations to, in this particular case, is Isabella Zuno. In recognition of the fifth grade girls North Shore League champs, on behalf of the citizens of the town of Winthrop and your family and friends that will look up to you proudly, recognizing that hard work, dedication, and being a part of a team can make you a champ. Given this fourth day of June 2019 at Winthrop, Massachusetts, Ron Vecchia, Town Council President, Council Members James Atiri, Vice President, Precinct 2, Richard Farino, Nick Laconti, Michael Lucerto, Linda Calla, Peter Christopher, Heather Engman, and Philip Von Corey. Congratulations. So Council President gets the easy job of reading the citation. I have to try to read the name. So I apologize in advance for any mispronunciation, but this is awesome. It's a great accomplishment. I'm so proud of you girls, and the town's very proud of you. Um, head Coach Eric Ferguson, who's been mentioned already, thank you for your service. Um, Josie Barry, not here. That's okay. I'm not going to, I'm going to give him out at the end. Um, Anna Mata Barry, congratulations. Safiato Barry, Ariana Capuccio, Claire Dickinson, Bailey Ferguson, Anastasia. Garcia? What is it? How much? Geitzel. Thank you. Jenna Gouge? Thank you, Gouge. <laughs> Tegan Pereira? Not here. Oh, Brady Rockefeller? Here. Polly Ciotis? Here. Adriana Visco? Vis right here. Vicio. Vicio. Yes. Jenna Whitehead? Here. And Isabella Zulo already has been recognized. Thank you so much, girls. you give me one of those citations, I'll read one real quick. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Who's Noah? I know. This is a citation that each one, each one of these are going to receive, okay, for a, <coughs> the program that you're involved with. The Town of Winthrop Town Council citation. Be it known to all that the Winthrop Town Council hereby offers its congratulations to Noah Say it louder. Yep. Bay of Order. In recognition of fifth grade boys Eastern League champs, on behalf of the citizens of the town of Winthrop and your family and friends that will look up to you proudly, recognize that hard work, dedication, and being a part of a team can make you a champ. Given this fourth day of June 2019 at Winthrop, Massachusetts, Ron Becky, Town Council President, James Atiri, Vice President, Richard Farino, Nick Laconti, Mike Lacerdo, Phil Boncori, Linda Calla, Peter Christopher, and Heather Engman. So there's one for each of you. Yell at me if I'm mispronouncing last names, all right? Gavin Collins. Come on down. Thank you. Nicholas Correa. Yeah. 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 Ace Daniel. Yeah. 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 Pedro de Silviera. Not here. Not here. Yeah. All right, cool. Sorry. Awkward delay. <laughs> Sean Dolan. Yeah. 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 Declan Howard. Yeah. 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 
Jack Hurley. Jack Hurley. Owen Munson. Seth Sacco. Jack Thompson. And Nathaniel Trafton. Great job, guys. Congratulations. Mr. Munson, real quick. Here, guys. Look at the big camera. Good job. Congratulations. And, uh, say thank you. Seven grade girls is left. Seven grade girls and Coach Derek Rose. Ladies, we have a citation for you. First of all, a job well done. Congratulations. We're going to give you each a citation. Coaches, great job. I'm going to read the citation, and Heather has them for you over there. Town of Winthrop Town Council citation, be it known to all that the Winthrop Town Council hereby offers its congratulations in this case to, in case to Kate Broden in recognition of the seventh grade girls North Shore League champs. On behalf of the citizens of the town of Winthrop and your family and friends that will look up to you proudly, recognizing that hard work, dedication, and being part of a team can make you a champ. Given this fourth day of June 2019 at Winthrop, Massachusetts, Ron Becky, Town Council President, Vice President James Letieri, Richard Farino, Nick Laconte, Mike Lacerno, Phil Boncori, Linda Calla, Peter Christopher, and Heather Engman. Who's Kate? Here you go, Kate. Congratulations. Congratulations all of you. This is such a terrific accomplishment. Uh, Reese Broden. Uh, Samantha Dementia. Camilla Ekberry. successful season. We're going to give you all a citation from the Town Council. I'd like to read the first one. Town of Winthrop Town Council citation be it known to all that the Winthrop Town Council hereby offers its congratulations in this case to Ryan Sufuni in recognition of the seventh grade boys Eastern League champs. On behalf of the citizens of the Town of Winthrop and your family and friends that will look up to you proudly 
recognizing that hard work, dedication, and being part of a team can make you a champ. Given this fourth day of June 2019 at Withrop, Massachusetts, Ron Becky, Town Council President, Jim Letary, Vice President, Richard Farino, Nick Conti, Mike Lacerdo, Phil Bancori, <laughs> Linda Calla, Peter Christopher, and Heather Engel. Congratulations. Citations, but I want to uh, also congratulate your head coach Nick Otis and the assistant coach Dean Galuris for an outstanding season. And uh, thank you for doing this for the boys. This is his rookie year as a coach. It, it is. It's <laughs> Adrian Callis. Adrian Callis. Andrew Ferretra. George Galuris. And this must be his brother, Jake Galoris. Hey, Jake. Yeah, yeah, Jake. Captain. Yeah, captain. Ryan Harris. Yeah. Mark Johnson. <laughs> Dimitri Kotsoufalakis. Alessio Marcoccio. Yeah, I get the Italian one first. Angelo Ortega Racinos. Angelo, good job. Evan Rockefeller, are you here? And finally, Vasily Ciotis. Congratulations, guys. Great job. Okay, the next item on the agenda, ladies and gentlemen, is a report by the Transportation Committee, Chair Julia Walsh. Julia, welcome. You want to introduce the members of your committee that are here? Sure thing. Um, good, good morning, good evening, counselors. I'm um, Julia Wallers, Chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee, and I have with me my colleagues Jerry Fowler, Chris Ayala, and Ben Chad. We together make up the Transportation Advisory Committee. And I actually, we have some slides to accompany um, what we're going to be presenting to you all tonight. And I'm not sure if you got the memo as well as we have anything printed in your packet. Okay, oh, well, got everything okay then. I'll take it. Oh, I guess I'm going to draw the laptop. Sorry, we were outside and didn't realize that the meeting had even started. <laughs> And Charles Southworth, also. Hey, I'm sorry, I had to throw my stuff out. Thank you. 
Click and go do go to slide. You can go to the first one. Actually, could one of my committee members just stand over here and press the desk? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. Where is it? Get placed right here. Yeah. 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 So we're here tonight to present some research and recommendations that we've been working on for the last few months. <coughs> Since we last addressed geolink, which was in December, we provided some ideas, things that we wanted to work on, asked for your blessing, suggested tasks um, of how we could move forward in 2019. And one of those things was to research how we might be able to take low cost, high impact improvements to our streets and intersections to make them safer, specifically for biking, which means really for everyone, but since we have an increase in biking as a result of the line bike program, as a result of just general increased interest in using bikes both for recommendation or for recreation and for transportation, we thought, well, what can we do um, and what do we already know that we can do based on previous research to make our town safer and more accessible for people of all ages and abilities to bike. So um, at that meeting, um, Council President Ron Vecchia had asked us to come up with some recommendations for streets that would be um, relatively easy to install either lanes or markings or signage that would get us on, that, on the path to being even more bike friendly community. So. What we want to talk about tonight, and I want to try to be brief, as brief as possible, is just a little background on our research, um, to talk about a survey that we conducted over the last month or so, and uh, present our recommendations for a phase one of improvements. Um, you could, there's so far that you could go, but we just want to start very initial, very, um, very introductory, and then um, just a little bit of background on road safety research that we did to underscore why this is important. Next slide. So before getting to work, we decided, let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's look at the research that's already been done. Um, what have consultants already put together? How can we repackage this in a way that can be implemented um, now? There might be some things to get on the shelf, and sure enough, there are. So the two, uh, uh, several documents that we, that we used most primarily were, namely the Complete Streets Tier 2 Prioritization Plan, which I think I've mentioned a few times, which is literally packages anything and everything you could do to our streets and intersections to make them more accessible <coughs> for people of all abilities and traveling by all modes. And also the Walk Winthrop Greenway Action Plan, which is a really fantastic report from 2011, a colleague of mine at MAPC put together. So we wanted to resurface these things, sort of bring them out of the shelf and put them forward to you as things that we could consider today. So things, we really considered everything from shared use paths off street to um, bike lanes and a cycle track, bike lanes, buffered bicycle lanes, contrafoot lanes, shared lanes, signage. There's so far they could go. It really depends on the, the feasibility, uh, the width of the street, the safety of the street, and um, the traffic levels. Next. So we considered everything. And some key things to point out that a desirable bike lane width is about six feet. Um, that you do need at least 38 feet of street width for bike lanes, and most, most streets in Winthrop are 34 <coughs> streets and cannot safely accommodate bike lanes. So I want to put that there, out there from the very beginning, that we don't see bike lanes as the end all to making Winthrop better for biking. They're only one tool in a bigger toolbox of how we can make our streets more accessible. Um, and in fact, that when you make streets wider, they actually increase faster driving, and that makes it less safe. For bikes. So our narrow streets are our asset, and we want to run with that. And the best thing we could do is just make our streets safer to make slow down the cars, and that makes people feel safer riding bikes. So we don't even honestly need bike lanes on most of our streets. Something as simple as a sign, um, as a network, a branded network, would do the trick, or pavement striping. So very, life, very low cost and high impact. That's what we're about. And ultimately, we're working towards what we like to think of as a robust robust Winthrop bike network, which, which could be branded with signage. There's so many fun things that we could do, both for commuters, residents, and tourists. Next slide. So <clears throat> we put in a phased approach, approach, and this actually comes directly from the Complete Streets plan. Um, the roads, these sort of three segments being Main Street, Main Street, Pauline, and Walden, Veterans, Shirley, and Lewis Lake, River Road, Cross Street, and Main Street. And I know that um, 
Councillor Beckett has specifically said, give us some recommendations for streets that have been recently paved. Um, there's not a whole lot of those, but these are ones that could fall into that bucket or are, that are in fairly good state of repair. Um, and we also want to recognize that there are some very exciting improvements coming down with Revere Street um, under the state, the capital plan, the TIP, um, and then possibly Pleasant and Main intersection. So actually, I'm going to have Chris Ayala take it on this portion. Thanks for having us. I'll try to match Julia's level of excitement, but I think it's possible. <laughs> We're all so um, excited. So there's three three sets of what we call phase one. I think importantly, these are areas that were already in prior reports that the town paid for, so we didn't reinvent the wheel. Secondly, we focused on areas that we think are high impact and low cost. Uh, clearly, we're cognizant that uh, financial limitations are, are an issue in town, um, so our recommendations largely are places where uh, it's just paint, uh, stripes on a road, nothing that's incredibly expensive. We're not asking to build anything uh, structurally here, uh, generally. So the entrance here you see is Walden, Main, and Pauline Street. The reason this is the first section of phase one is uh, the symbolism here. First off, it's the entrance to town from East Boston, coming from the Heights. Um, so there is that uh, bike lane in East Boston that connects to the station and then to the East Boston Greenway. So a connection coming into Winthrop would be symbolic. Hey, welcome to Winthrop. We're friendly uh, to bike riders here. We think that that's a street that, uh, I'll say this, uh, yeah, I know uh, Steve Cowell is here. At the end of the day, DPW needs to make sure it's safe and that there's enough room for bike lanes. So we're recommending this, but it may not be the case that bike lanes fit everywhere, um, in which case there are other um, options such as shadows and signage. Um, so we'll, we will leave it to DPW to be the final like sayer on you know, whether or not this actually fits, but Main Street would be a great symbolic entrance to town, whether it's showers or bike lanes with signs, perhaps to say, you know, bikes may use full lane if, if there's not a bike lane. Um, then Walden Street's another area where there's several options. Uh, you could do bike lanes on the road uh, in both directions. If that's uh, not possible due to limitations of the width of the street, um, you can decide whether or not uh, you want to move some parking to make it uh, feasible, or even uh, instead of having the bike paths on Walden Street, um, there is the park there, you could build a bike path through the park, but that might be a little more expensive because you'd actually be paving uh, a section of the park uh, to make a trail. Pauline Street, uh, from the end of the middle school site, I think it's Wheelock Street up until uh, Metcalf Square, appears to be wide enough for actual bike lanes. The remainder of Pauline Street going up to Pleasant uh, would be a great spot for uh, Sharrows. Again, this would be uh, low cost, just paint added to the you know, streets, perhaps some signage, uh, but nothing that would cost the town significant amounts of money. And there are estimates for the costs in some of the old uh, reports the town uh, procured. Uh, so that's the first section, and I think that's super symbolic, the entrance to town, and also connection to the center business district, and town hall you know, to that center business district. Uh, the next area we looked at, again, not a surprise here, is Veterans Road um, and Shirley Street, and then the path across Lewis Lake. Uh, park. Uh, starting with the path, uh, in response to the Walk Winthrop report that was authored a long time ago, uh, DPW, and they deserve a lot of credit for this, started that pathway. Uh, it's not complete, but you can see where, where it was begun, and we thank uh, DPW for doing that. Um, it's a gravel path. Uh, it's great to ride your bike on. If it was completed all the way over to uh, the River Road area, that would create a nice connection from the beach area. Uh, towards the center that would take bikes off of Washington Street. So it would be a safer place for bikes and perhaps less frustrating for uh, those of us driving our cars or trucks around town who might get stuck behind a bike on Washington. Um, looking at Veterans Road, we think that it's wide enough to accommodate bike lanes in both directions. If it's only wide enough for a bike lane in one direction, Shirley Street, much of that section of Shirley Street there behind the beach is one, dire one direction and could handle a bike lane going one way with traffic um, for much of Shirley Street there. So you do have an option to kind of make bikes go one way on one street and come back the other way on the other street. Um, I know that snow removal and snow emergency parking are an issue because that's uh, where people are sent to park in the winter during snow emergencies. Again, uh, we don't want to inconvenience the town. Uh, it's probable that the bike traffic would be much uh, lower than normal during snow emergencies. So the town could uh, put it into an ordinance that you know, this is a bike lane, but during snow emergencies, it'll be allowed for parking. So there's workarounds where you can have a bike lane uh, and still use it for other pur purposes during emergency situations. 
I think that would be a reasonable compromise. Um, if the final section here would connect to that uh, bike path that goes through Lewis Lake Park uh, to try to connect the beach um, to uh, towards the center and also to the uh, high school site. I know the, uh, the ditch is there as well, but this would be a second option. So it would be um, a part of River Road. Uh, we'll acknowledge that River Road does not appear wide enough for bike lanes, but it could be a nice place for some shadows and signage. It's actually a pleasant street already to ride your bike on, but just uh, kind of wayfinding, making sure people know, hey, this is the way to go. It connects to other bike paths. That uh, would be helpful. Uh, Cross Street, there's a few options. They're in the memo we sent you. Uh, there's options to put shadows or bike lanes on Cross Street, depending on how you want to handle the uh, pedestrian traffic. There's also right now, there's an access road through the cemetery um, <coughs> that runs parallel <coughs> to Cross Street, uh, and that could be used, I mean, it, it is used to access the cemetery, but it could also be used um, for bike traffic or pedestrian traffic to cut through, um, perhaps from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, obviously, there's reasons you might not want people in there at night, but it could be used during the day uh, for commuters to work and to school uh, to ride safely off the street uh, towards the school from uh, the River Road area. Uh, so those are the, uh, the three kind of main sections that we think really creates a great foundation to get around Winthrop. Uh, if you just did these three sets of paintings, um, you could cross most of the town on, uh, on a bike lane. And again, we, we've tried to outline areas where it, it is low cost. You're not, you're not building new pavement. You're not putting a new road in or new pathway. It's just, at this point, striping the streets. It's not free, but it's not um, prohibitively expensive. And there may be other funding solutions out there. And then everything that Chris just showed you actually reflects what was in the complete streets preservation plan and combined with the improvements on Shore Drive, the coming improvements on Revere Street and what we proposed, you would literally have a nice circumferential network around Winthrop, either for getting where you want to go or just leisurely running through neighborhoods. So we also have this um, very homemade sign of what we envision as a bike network. And this is much more comprehensive than what we presented here. I can leave this and we have, we would love to get this digitized as a, you know, a map that the blue would be actual infrastructure, actual striped lanes, and the red is just part of a network. You know, there's never gonna be bike lanes on Shore Drive, but it's a great place to ride your bike, even on the sidewalk. It's beautiful, it's getting you all around the town. So this is really envisioning it, even up in the Highlands, sort of a off-street network. So we have this as well, but not, not in our initial recommendation. And then the next thing I think we want to do is just give you a little background on the survey that we ran and share those results. We had, um, this was in person at the bike kickoff and also online email and social media. We had it printed in the paper as well for about a month. Um, and there was just six questions. We got 200 responses. We shut it off at 200 and 64 comments. And I will happily share all the comments and all the reviews, um, all the results, but it was quite long. It would have been a lot of paper. So just a little snapshot here to show, you know, how does, what does our community feel? What do people want? Um, go ahead. Um, some of the key findings really we found that of the 200 people, about 70% said that they currently ride a bike um, somewhat frequently. 44% um, said they don't bike, say it's because they don't feel safe. That was the number one reason. And we'll show you the pie charts as well. Um, about 60% said that they would bike or bike more if they felt safer. So safety, safety is number one, understandably. And 80% of all 200 people said that they do support efforts to improve our streets to make them safer. So the first question, do you currently bike? You can see the breakdown here. There's a good chunk who said no, but there's a good chunk who said yes. I'm going on. Um, how often, and this is a pretty, we said it, we excluded winter. Some people got mad about this in the comments and we excluded that because a lot of people simply don't bike in the winter. You might have a hard time answering that question. So we said, let's just remove winter from the equation. Um, and that's how that breakdown came out. Um, and if not, if you do not bike ever, we want to know why not. The blue is, I don't feel safe. The next one is the red, I don't have a bike. Um, the green one is that my destinations are just not accessible by bike. That's a very legitimate reason not to ride your bike. And the next one is, I'm not physically able to bike. And then the tiny reason we said other, a lot of people had other reasons. And I, I think you'll have fun reading through those reasons. Um, would you choose to bike more if local streets and intersections were made safer through signage? Bike lanes where feasible, I really want to emphasize where feasible. A lot of people attacked us saying we're going to put bike lanes everywhere. That's simply not the case. We're very reasonable folks here. Um, pavement markings and traffic calming. Traffic calming is number one. Make, slow the cars, number one thing you can do. Um, and so over 50% said yes, that they would. 
um, to support the efforts, to do what I just said, and to implement our complete streets policy. This is really the way to drive this. We've had a lot of this work done for us already. We just need to pull the trigger and press play. And overwhelming majority of people, about 80%, said yes. So we think there's reason to believe that there is significant public support to do this and to dedicate resources. We understand budget constraints are tight, but possibly there's outside funding grant opportunities, and we would love to play a role in securing that for the town. <coughs> So I don't have time to go through this. These are some snapshots of the comments and feedback. Um, like I said, there was many, many more, and I'm happy to share those. But things like, yes, anything to make it safer. I would bike, but there's no bike lanes. I applaud this initiative. We need to make our streets safer. Um, there's too much speeding. Safety, safety, safety. Um, people reference the line bike program. So we felt that there was a lot of support <coughs> in the comments, as well as a lot of people who did not support it. And I want to be totally honest about that. Okay? So you'll, you'll see both sides of the coin in the comments. Um, this is a reflection of the complete streets policy that we want to continue to help implement and hopefully um, the town manager's office will set up the advisory committee that, came, that was supposed to be part of that um, policy to oversee its implementation. And um, Chris wants to say a couple words about the Greenway. We've had some good news about that and how that ties into overall efforts to make our town accessible to the whole region, not just around the town. Sure. So um, it's really being spearheaded by the Friends of East Boston Greenway and Rep Adaro in East Boston. Uh, we do have some uh, local allies here in Winthrop as well. Um, their goal is to uh, continue the East Boston Greenway, which runs from Maverick Square to Constitution Beach, um, all the way towards the Revere Beach. And uh, Rep Madaro has been a, a great ally of the people of Winthrop by advocating uh, to actually bring a branch of that across the uh, marsh to Winthrop via the Morton Street area. There's some money in the state budget this year to um, start studying the feasibility of the beginning of this extension. Uh, that isn't bringing the whole thing into Winthrop. The first part right now is to bring the actual uh, bike lanes <coughs> into the Orient Heights Station from Constitution Beach. Um, but that's a huge first step for Winthrop because once it gets there, it's, it's much closer to actually being a reality of coming to Winthrop. <coughs> and we hope in the next few years to expand the funding uh, to have a study about bringing a bridge across to Morton Street um, and then eventually hopefully getting the design and built. Obviously it's a long-term project, but um, the more we advocate for it now, the more likely it is to happen in the future. Also, the more uh, bike infrastructure we have in Winthrop, such as bike lanes and signage, uh, the more people will start riding bikes and the more support there would be um, for such a, uh, you know expenditure. Obviously, we don't envision Winthrop paying for this bridge. I mean, we have our budget limitations. We have to pay for the schools, the police, the fire. Um, but we think there's state funding and other resources out there we can tap into as long as the town is you know, a proud champion of this idea. And thanks to our town manager for expressing support for that as well. Um, also, at some point, Pleasant Street and Washington and that intersection at Main Street coming into town will have to be rebuilt and redesigned. If we do everything to the complete streets policy, which essentially we'd have to to get state money, money uh, that will include um, bike lanes or signage. So. There are possibilities for um, improving our bike infrastructure through the normal um, improvements to the infrastructure in town. If you look at the Revere Street project and what uh, DPW has been working on, um, that's a tremendous uh, you know, improvement. And I think Mr. Caller deserves a lot of credit for making sure that's being done the right way. Um, the very preliminary things I've heard, seen and heard about uh, are really fantastic and will be a huge improvement to biking in Winthrop and connecting to the bike lanes that we're suggesting today. So some future projects to consider, um, and I actually print out a copy of the Walk Winthrop Greenway Action Plan for all of you just to have on hand so you don't have to try to dig it up. Um, it's hard to read here, but including here, if you really want to build out our network, there's little things like just connecting the dots at Lewis Lake so people can shoot right across there, that one little connection. Um, we have a beautiful sea, uh, sea walls that could be made more accessible, and this is also proposed by MAPC, and um, sort of making that connection around Cottage Hill so that Winthrop is a place you can walk or bike all the way around without having to encounter unsafe areas. Because stress, it's all about stress. If people don't feel like they're under stress, they're gonna choose to ride a bike or to walk or get around another way. So, um, these are just future things to consider. Thank you very much. We understand that the town has big fish to fry when it comes to our budget and our schools and our, our quality of life, but we really do feel like these recommendations do not take away from that, that we can actually do a lot for very little effort and resource to make life in Winthrop even better for everyone. And we hope that we will take our recommendations to heart and we are here to help in any way that we possibly can. 
Um, we just want to take a quick minute to, I think Ben or Charles is going to, I don't know if we even need to do this, but. I, I can say a word about it. Yeah, we had done some research time, that I can bring up for you about road safety in general. Um, yeah, so uh, to kick this off prior to this presentation, um, we did a little, like, where would bike lanes be important? Where are we encountering accidents and stuff like that around town? Um, and that whole little report that we did is actually, I think, on record as one of our committee meetings. I think it was for the March. Anyway, um, short summary is, unlike on Facebook, people in Winter Barn are stupid. There really is a significant ring of high accidents kind of in the areas where you want to bike. Um, so that chart that says, hey, I don't feel safe, that's a real thing. That's not just people who want to bike. Like, if I think about where I would want to bike in town, it would be to the center, it would be to the beach, it would be along what basically in that data shows a ring of accidents around town in intersecting streets on our kind of high traffic roads, which would pretty much be where you'd want to kind of go. So that's sort of where, you know, what kicked this off and why it makes sense to look at really where the traffic is, where people want to go, and how they can get there safer and help to shape that a little better. Um, because if you're just a, a lay person and there's no direction or anything, you're going to go the route that you understand, that makes sense. And that route is basically a ring of accidents around town. I, I went through the data and every year it was the same spots. I did aggregated data over a series of years to try to see if there's a trend. Um, and you can see this in, in the little report that, that we did. But, uh, and that's not just random data I found, that's state data from MassDOT that you can dig up on an interactive map. And I did some like, you know, spreadsheet analysis and stuff like that, which I will not bore you with. But end of the day, unless we give people a way to figure out how to get around town on bikes and even walking and other stuff, they're going to go in a direction that leads them into conflict with vehicles and cars. And that's kind of the let's avoid this side where you guys are given the positive spin. Is if we make it safe to bike and guide people in a direction where it is safe to bike, we're not going to come into as many of those conflicts with cars. And the data that I saw didn't indicate hit a pedestrian, hit a bicyclist. It was just raw car accident data, you know, were there injuries, that type of stuff. But it clearly showed a pattern, and if I were thinking about biking, that's what would make me not want to bike around town. And I think that's probably, you know, I obviously don't have the correlation data between did you see this map and where do you find accidents? <coughs> but th that's what would make me have pause to see, you know, to say I don't want to bike here because it just feels a little too unsafe. Um, so I'll shut up. But that's what kicked this off, and I think that that data is on record. So if you want to see that, that's in our little report, and it also has all the URLs for the little maps. So if people want to go around and say, okay, well, what about this intersection? You can totally go do that. That data exists, and it's publicly available. So we basically want to do our homework. Take a look at it yourself if you don't want to take our report. Do any of you have any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Well, I think you're doing an amazing job with these reports and letting us know what's going on and what we can do. Uh, I'm very uh, complimentary to your committee. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a concern though about the line bikes, because the line bikes came out this past week. Right. The council never voted on putting the line bikes out this year, and I don't know who signed the contract. I'm sure it might have been Austin, That's, but I don't know. <coughs> I think it should have went to the Public Safety Committee first it did. to look at the contract. No, oh, the contract, no. No, we and made recommendations, which just to make fun. sure we're indemnified from any accidents because I've been observing people driving these bikes for four or five days and I have not seen one person wear a helmet. And it's very concerning. And I know the police department gives out free helmets. Mm -hmm. And your bike expo that you had yeah. a month or two ago, yeah. it's a fantastic mm -hmm. thing for the whole town. Mm -hmm. It was really accepted by the town. And they gave out bicycle helmets to them at that yeah. time. I think if we're going to have the line bike program, we should have worked out something where there would be a helmet on each bicycle when the people got the bicycles. And I don't see why that would have been impossible, and it's something That's that should have been done. Them. But I also think that that should have come to the council before the they were on the street. No, we didn't vote on that last year, did we? Mm -hmm. no. no. Yeah. 
In fact, I think the contract was part of a, the contract we shared with Revere. With MAPC, there was a right. consortium, and our, our committee actually wasn't part of that. Right. We provided recommendations, but then it went to the town manager's office. Um, yeah, a, more of a rollout would have been wonderful in education. I think it would be nice to have a helmet on each bike, but I, to put that, I don't think that's very practical. We can do education well, and messaging around. Education, I education, I think they've done I mean, a great we, job. We have 59 yeah. bikes, I believe, in town. Yeah. I believe the police department gave out about 150 bike helmets. So I mean, the helmets are available that we could have, have them on the bikes. Yeah, but do you want to share helmets with yeah. strangers? No. 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 Yeah, it's, it's a challenge with bike share worldwide is the safety issue. And ultimately what we try to do is make streets safer so you don't have the conflict. Um, but it's, it is a challenge. But it's, we can certainly do a very messaging and education town. about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, check with the Board of Health. There are no cooties in this town. <laughs> do we have any other comments or any questions from the council? Comments or questions for any other Have you identified any other funding? to possibly help out with all the lining and that kind of stuff? The striping? I mean, the state has a complete streets program. Uh, we have a grant from that secured, but it's, it's for the center, so we're not able to allocate any of that outside of this right now. Um, I mean, there's there's tons of organizations that do offer small grant programs. We haven't pursued that, but I think that's something that we would like to look into to supplement local funding for these. Um, and again, striping is just paint. It's not a whole lot of money, um, but the more we can have support that doesn't come from local funds, the better. Steve, is that a big problem if we identify a street that we wanted to put a, uh, a lane in, a bike lane? Is that? As, as I mentioned earlier, really we don't have any roads in town, minus maybe Veterans Road, that does have the width to accommodate a <coughs> designated bike lane. Mm -hmm. We could do shared lanes, uh, and we could we could stripe and we could we could paint. I do. I mean, I don't know if it's, it's the, the place to start discussing this, but. We all see Main Street and Revere Street in the morning, which is when people will probably be commuting with their bikes. I do have some concerns. Um, I would certainly like to get uh, additional opinions. We can certainly talk. I would love to promote Morton Street a little bit more, where we have the, 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 the bridge. Yeah, we have that as part of our preferred network. You calm, know, I would prefer streets. to see the bikes down off of So signage can be great for that, like you with know? the white network. Even just a blue sign with an arrow and a, like a logo. Like so if you're on your bike, go this way. Like, avoid this. Yeah. Unless you're and bold that, and don't mind. Main Street Revere Corridor is where a lot of the accidents are. Right. That's yeah. part of that ring around town. Yep. So, um, again, I'm, I'm here yeah. to help. Yeah, um, let's plan on getting together. Yeah, we have a lot of quiet streets to take can, advantage of. A, um, we can zero in on something. Even if it's if, if we use uh, Veterans Road as, as a test or at least showing the people that we're trying to promote it, even if it's one street, and then as far as the busy streets that people take to go to work in the morning, you're gonna have, that's going to be a altogether different issue. What I don't know is, is what it means if an ordinance has to actually be created. Uh, Phil, maybe you know that more than, than I do. Um, you didn't know about the helmets. So I don't know about that. Oh, I know about the helmets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. it's great for, for tourists to Boston Harbor now. Did a bike tour. They took the ferry, and a bunch of cyclists went to um, Twist and Shake and took a ride around town. And the more that we have just little symbols that this is a town that's, that's friendly to you, it makes a big difference. Boston? Just to follow up on some of your questions, so in the um, MOU that we have with them, they um, have insurance coverage for birth, body, and uh, property damage, um, up to a million dollars per occurrence. Um, in addition, based on the recommendations <coughs> of the TAC and TSAC, um, I had those added to the agreement as an MOU. That was an addendum to it, and the previous um, so last year at this time, um, David Cressman had actually signed the MOU with Line Bikes. So it's, I apologize for not bringing it to the council before, but this is something that my office has the authority to do. Well, I, I don't doubt that you have the authority to do it. So I want to make sure that we quite indemnify completely, yep. and yep. I don't know that a million dollars is really enough in today's day and age. So it's, it's per occurrence, so we, we can talk about that offline. Anything else? Uh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming in. I'm excited about the potential down the road of a connection from East Boston via the old uh, trestle that was there. Hundreds of signatures on that. Mm -hmm. I had a long discussion People with People get excited when they hear this stuff. It makes us want to stay in Winthrop. I had a discussion with the, the rep from East Boston. He's quite Winter. excited. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we have a great delegation. Uh, one of your relatives has been excellent for this as well. Adrian, uh, Lydia, and Joey are working together on Yeah. Very good. So if you don't mind, Thank you very do much. you mind if I leave this here? Okay. I read my bed.
I care. It has a lot better Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, we have two public hearings this evening. The first one is the town council to vote to transfer 530000 from the general stabilization fund to the police personnel account. Um, town manager, would you want to just give us a, a quick overview of this? Sure. This is based off of an arbitration award that um, we were handed down and um, is the amount of money owed um, in terms of back pay for an employee. I'll open it up. Anybody wish to be heard? Councilor? This was uh, this was brought up one of the issues in our finance committee meeting this evening and it did get voted with positive recommendation to go to the full council which we would do with old business. Any further discussion, questions, or comments? Hearing none, I'll close up that public hearing. The next public hearing is the town council to appropriate five million five hundred twenty-three thousand three hundred thirty-four for the purposes of financing the engineering, design, construction of the Withrop Center District project. We had a brief discussion at the last meeting on this. Would you like to just over give us an overview? Um, so my, the CFO, Anna Friedman, and Assistant Town Manager, Dave Rodriguez, have a presentation on this. Would you like to see that now, or do you want to see that later in the meeting? Uh, they, can, they can kind of run through it. I think we'd rather run through it now. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's, let's do, do that now. now. Thank you, Mr. President and the, uh, members of the council uh, for your consideration on this and this was discussed at the Finance Committee just a short time ago. Uh, we wanted to do a couple things with regards to this uh, item. We wanted to provide an update as to the cost estimate for the Center Business District infrastructure project that's been under consideration for quite some time. And also uh, discuss an issue that came up recently uh, regarding this, the town's application to the Clean Water State Revolving Fund and the financing structure that was presented to the council in the fall. Um, just by way of background, we're going to discuss the project estimate first. Um, just to, in, in the, uh, it was directed by, by Austin uh, to us um, in the interest of full, dis uh, full transparency to discuss exactly what these uh, numbers would mean and transparency for the council as well as the public at large uh, to discuss exactly how much this project is anticipated to cost. Uh, <coughs> kind of the ceiling, uh, the cost ceiling that we're, we're anticipating for the project as it moves towards construction. Uh, the latest estimate, and uh, Anna, Anna's going to talk about the numbers, and I'll talk about uh, some of the, the reasoning behind it. Um, so I'll, I'll kick it over to Anna and talk about some of the numbers. And just, to, um, and just to preface this, the project cost updates that we're providing right now are not related to the second part of our presentation, which has to do with um, the motion that's in front of you tonight. This is this first part of the presentation is an effort um, in transparency <coughs> to provide the latest updates that we have as soon as um, we, you know, when we've received them on our end. So um, we've re recently received updated projected project cost estimates for our project manager, and the latest, uh, the latest estimate is $13,284,834. So this estimate was completed on the final project drawings. The previous estimates that this council has been briefed on in the past um, of $12,167,500 was based off of progress drawings. Um, and so there's, there's a variance there of about $1.1 $1 million. And um, I know David's going to walk through some of the reasons behind that. Um, it includes a number, a, a couple different things. There are some, uh, some requirements from the town council as well as the town manager's committee that were included within those, those, those reasoning. Um, on the next slide, you can see in these, these are listed. These are not in order of either 
amount or importance. These are these are kind of at random. Uh, so it was the coordination and incorporation of the landscape architect design, adding the landscape architect as a subconsultant, which was of course a, a requirement uh, handed to us by the by the council. Uh, design of the electrical improvements, incorporating peer review recommendations. The peer review was also a recommendation that was. Uh, given to the manager's office uh, from the council as a condition of the funding. Uh, addition of replacing all the street signs within the center business district limits. The addition of removing and resetting 100% of the grand curbing in areas where new curbing was not proposed. In a previous city, assuming we're going to have to replace about 50% of that. Uh, paving on Putnam Street and an increase in sewer item costs to reflect current bids received. So the project manager would have current uh, is constantly updating the numbers to reflect uh, bids that they're receiving and other similar projects in other areas. Uh, this, this reflects cost of materials, cost of labor, uh, overall project costs, so that's constantly updated. Uh, I'll defer to Steve Calla, who's the, pro the subject matter expert on these projects of this type, uh, if you have specific questions regarding what, uh, if you want to break that down even further, but this is the general all over, over increase. The lion's share of which, of course, uh, is the coordination of the, uh, the landscape architect design, the, uh, the architect, the landscape architect as a subconsultant, and the desire of the town manager's committee to issue this as a single project bid. Uh, this is a one in, uh, comprehensive project, um, soup to nuts. Everything in the ground, everything on top of the ground is, included, is going to be included within the bid. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a, a large share of that $1.1 million uh, estimated project estimate increase. And, uh, one important thing to note, um, we have some very in-depth conversations with our project manager on <coughs> this increase and wanted to understand you know, what should expectations be once bids are received, because obviously these are just estimates, the numbers aren't final until uh, we receive bids, and we wanted to know like, what should expectations be, where those bids would fall, and they um, said that their process is that they attempt to see <coughs> what the total construction cost of the third or fourth lowest bid price received would be, and so this is what that, this estimate, you know, we wanted to try to feel out the confidence of where this estimate would fall in terms of where we'd see bids, and so this is intended to really fall within like the third or fourth lowest uh, bid price of where we should be and so ideally we would be coming in below that but this is what um, this is their sort of best estimate based on the information that they provided in terms of new inputs um, to um, to their cost estimates is there any questions regarding that part questions so that, that that's the update on the cost that's the project project update, estimate project, update, project cost so the matter before the council this evening uh, is, is with regards to the, the town's application for the Clean Water State Revolving Fund application. Um, this is a program that's run by the Department of Environmental Protection, and, um, and we're using it in order to fund a portion of the project uh, that's been previously approved. Uh, based on our conversations, and so kind of parallel to the town management <coughs> process as we were working through those issues, uh, we, did, we were working on our application, we were interfacing with DEP, in order to gather all of the information that we would need in order to hit the ground running uh, as soon as we were able. Um, we were informed just a few weeks ago that under the SRF program, uh, the entire project cost, that $13 million number, needs to be authorized through bonding or appropriation in order to be applicable for the, for the, this, the SRF program. Uh, this, had, this is independent of any grant funding. Uh, that may be being used for the project. That would include the $2.38 million in MassWorks funding and the $244,000 in complete streets funding uh, that is available to the town through grant. Uh, so we, for the purposes of the SRF application, that money doesn't exist. Uh, so it was after conversations with, uh, fervent conversations with uh, Woodard and Curran, Anna, Bond Council, DEP, uh, in order to find a solution, um, it was determined that the best course forward uh, was to reauthorize an amount of money uh, to, to restructure the financing in a way uh, that would include the entire amount of the project cost through bond funding. And that's the, that, that accounts for the increase uh, that you see tonight. Um, again, I'll defer to Anna uh, when it comes to the, um, to the, to the monetary aspects. So um, a couple important things to note about um, the motion that's in front of you today. Um, so the, the additional authorization um, that is requested in the motion, um, that will not, um, that is not forecasted to affect the current water sewer rate. So the debt service for this project um, will be afforded through the current water sewer rate based on analysis that we've done to date. If we were to put the shovel in the ground right now, we would be able to pay for the, uh, the debt service at the current rate of $22.90. 
Um, it's also important to know that this particular, um, the financing that's available for the town through the SRF program offers a really beneficial structure for the town. Um, we currently are eligible to receive principal forgiveness of $527,217.90. So that means that of the, you know, of the borrowing that we're doing, right off the top, we don't have to pay that amount back. So that's on the table to be lost if this isn't structured um, consistent with their requirements. Um, it, so that, that is one of the reasons why we wanted to bring this in front of you as soon as possible. Um, and so the motion that's in front of you is for a new um, amount of <laughs> of um, $5,523,334. So how did we get to that number? Um, that is the total project cost of $13.2 million, less previously authorized borrowing amounts. So the amounts that the council has authorized to date is a little over, is about $11.6 million. So the, the difference between those two is $1,603,334. And um, there's existing loan authorization of $3.3,920,000 um, that the council has previously authorized, which, which um, we've identified as the uh, most appropriate source to, um, to change based on the language that exists for that, um, for that authorization. And so we are just adding the variance to get to the total project cost to adhere to SRF's and DR DEP's requirements. So that gets you to that, that $5.5 million number that's in front of you tonight. Um, in order to um, ensure that we, you know, in order to ensure that the amount of borrowing is reflective of the intent for the amount of borrowing, and that we utilize the grants for the project that we have, um, there the motion has language that requires the amount authorized to be offset by any present or future available grant funding. So that's to ensure that while we have grant funding and then we have authorization, we only we only the total project cost adds up to um, the cost that we're that we're that we're aiming and we're presenting, um, and that we're only borrowing for the amount that um, we intend to borrow for. Um, as we mentioned before, this will allow us to retain the principal forgiveness, um, which is beneficial for the town. Um, and just reiterating one more time, this, this particular amended bond authorization is not related to the updated project cost. Um, this, we're not doing this because there are any changes in project costs, just because it's required by Mass DEP. If there are any questions, we'd be happy to provide any clarity on anything. <coughs> Questions? Yes. Council President, well, just to clarify, we may be um, voting to authorize more borrowing, but we are not um, intending to spend any more of this money on That's the, correct. The, the correct. It's authorization. Yeah, not the actual correct. borrowing. Thank you. Okay. Any comments or questions? Yes, Karen. Um, Mr. Well, who is the project manager on this project? So, where are you from? Wooden card, any particular place, just wooden card. It's, it's our one that does that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, also, um, for FY20, what would we actually, you're going to bond after July 1, I'm assuming. Uh, uh, yes, that's likely. So, how much, what will we actually be paying next year? How much interest? Any principal at all? And, uh, likely no principal next year, just one interest payment, which I, I, just I, regret I don't have payment. that in front of me right okay. now. But yeah, just one interest payment. And then, when would you anticipate a second bond? A second bond. I, I believe that we would do the. You know, we would we would be bonding. We would do the. We would do the bonding next year in, in, in July, likely for the full. I'm not for the SRF. We would likely. You're going to do. You're going to bond for the entire project. Not for the entire project. Just for the. The, the project has a number of different financing sources, and so some of it. The SRF bonding is the amount that is most is is the large bonding that's outstanding, and so we would be doing that in the summer sometime, likely based on the current timeline. And then what will we be paying on that? That's the interest payment. That's the one interest payment we'd be paying. Okay. For, yeah. Again. Yeah. I mean, you're only you're only only, <coughs> only <laughs> five and a half million dollars mm -hmm. only. Um, but when do you anticipate going out for costs for the, the balance of the project? You're saying the entire project is over thirteen million dollars. Right. So we have. Let me pull up the financing. Yeah, so is this whole is this whole PowerPoint going to be? On the website, yeah. with, with, and I'll stop. I mean, if, if I see where the funding so this is comes from. Oh, yeah. Rest of the funding. The, let me give you the rest of the funding. Mr. President, it's all right. <coughs> just, just for your, um, just for clarification, of the project because it's, it's such a, it's such a layered financing structure. Mm -hmm. We're talking about NWA Water, NWA okay. Sewer, SRF, yep. two authorizations under SRF, yep. grant funding. Uh, complete streets one. It's it's we we enter our through so the then it's, at some point then 
I mean, if this goes on the website, fine. But yeah. at some point, the actually funding, when the funding is coming, could that be posted? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. appreciate sure. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you very much. Anyone else wish to be here? <coughs> Council? Hearing none, I'll close out. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is correspondence. We do have one received on June 3rd. President Ron Becchio, members of the Town Council, Subjects Park, and Recreation Department. I am requesting that you begin discussion as soon as possible on finding a permanent home for the Parks and Recreation Department. Currently located at the rear of the deserted building, parents have expressed concern for security. Moving them to the Memorial Gym at 151 Pauline Street would be a good choice. Space available there would be ideal for their programs. Access could <coughs> remain the rear of the gym on Brookfield Road, locking the door that opens to the Pauline Street parking lot shared with the rink. The back lot has parking for 50 cars, which would accommodate any parks and recreation function, as well as rentals for the gym. The rink is active from mid-August to the first week of May, and there's a direct access from one to the other, which adds security being looked for. Which adds security being looked for. The current area is being heated by electricity. This would be a substantial saving on utilities for this utilized empty building known as the Old Middle School. I have also been told that the bathroom facilities in that area are not the best. There is a new boiler for that area, that was paid for by the SBAC. I ask you to address this and make a decision that will benefit Mr. Driscoll, his co-workers, and the kids of our town that participate in the programs offered by Parks and Recreation. I signed Karen Chavez, Precinct 2. We will take that under advisement, Karen. Thank you. Committee reports, finance, will wait until we get to old business. Okay. Uh, do you have anything to say now? No, we can wait. Town Manager's Report. Thank you very much. Good evening. Um, next week is Harbor Day and the uh, new boat launch ribbon cutting ceremony. So that is Tuesday, <coughs> July, June 11th, which is a week from today. The ribbon cutting starts at 5 p.m. and is immediately followed by waterfront activities, including free food, uh, craft vendors, ferry cruises, and live music until 8 p.m. Um, that means that the public boat ramp is closed tomorrow for final paving and striping, so we can get it looking all nice for everyone. Um, Miller Field public access hours have started. Um, they are Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 8 a.m., and Saturdays from 1 to 5 p.m., and Sundays from 7 a.m. to noon. Um, and those hours will change. Um, after school is out as well. Um, family fun nights begin this Thursday, 5.30 to 7 p.m. at the Massa Playground. There's an MWRA community meeting this Thursday at 7 p.m. There are new solar-powered LED pedestrian crosswalk signs that were supplied by um, our police department through the Child Safety Grant, um, and they were installed on the Revere Street Corridor. Two more speed sign, or LED speed signs will also be installed at the crest of Revere Street Hill in an effort to slow traffic approaching the school zone and elderly housing on Golden Drive. And townwide crosswalk painting is underway, so this harkens back to the presentation from earlier tonight, trying to reduce speed as much as possible around town. Um, water quality testing um, on Winter Public Beaches has begun for the summer months. The fireworks are scheduled for July 4th at 9.15 p.m. Um, and we got more fun to talk about later, so that's I, all for me. Yes, um, since the town manager brought it up, you, you talked a little bit about the um, park night at Massive Park. Since we have the uh, park director back here, can I just have him explain that a little bit? Absolutely. More? Yeah, so we started a couple of years ago. Um, each Thursday night in June, we like to open up different parks in different parts of town. So we're doing three this year. We're going to start with Massa on this Thursday coming up. The next one will follow up with Pond Street. And then uh, the last big one is meet the council tonight for the, for the summer program and stuff. Uh, we'll have some music and, and, and giveaway there in the side park, which is the biggest one of the year. And we, we partnered with the Winter Police. Terry's group has been great. They come down and serve food, uh, get in you know, free food. And, and bike helmets last year we had. I'm not sure if we're going to have more of those again as well. I know we yeah, talked about helmets earlier. <laughs> but um, no, it's good nights. It's good to open up parks, and we get to meet a lot of people that we might not have met yet that just kind of got the town. So it's a great thing. I suggest anyone <coughs> that 
It's 5.30 to 7 on uh, Thursday nights in June. So it's Thursday, June 6th, and then Thursday, Thursday June 13th, 13th, and then Thursday, 20th. June 20th, I think it's And then we keep one Thursday open for a rain day, just in case you lose one. Anything okay. else? Oh. Okay. School, uh, school department update, real quick, from last night, June 3rd, with the school committee. Uh, the superintendent reports that the installation of solar panels has begun on the new middle high school. Uh, the district will introduce a policy of re-registration of students grades 3, 6, and 9 to ensure that all students are residing in the town of Winthrop. In 2019 school year, 74 students moved to Winthrop. Is that correct? Okay. The superintendent presented a four-page list of colleges and universities that the class of 2019 will be attending. The list includes uh, Harvard, MIT, Columbia, Dartmouth, just to mention a few. And the committee has taken under advisement a request to rent out certain classroom space at the Winthrop High School for a summer school program. That's that. I just want to point out that the graduation was this past week, and uh, Council and Terry and myself attended the graduation, and it was a very well run uh, program, and uh, we enjoyed is. it. Always is. Just, and just to follow up on that, it's an incredible, obviously an incredible event, it's extremely exciting for the kids, and um, it's just the superintendent that's here, I would like her to just, I mean, it's incredible what a town we have and how much, in some respect, we have to offer the kids. If, if, if I could just ask her to give us a round figure as to how much money was presented in terms of scholarships. I didn't even ask that, I believe I, I had the list last night, I knew it was Three hundred and twenty-eight thousand dollars in scholarships. Two hundred and I believe thirteen, nah, which good. were um, from the Pasella family uh, scholarships that we, we gave out to our students. So um, that's an awful lot of money. Um, we appreciate the time the parents took to sit through the presentations and hand out the awards. There were some really interesting awards that uh, folks had the time to read. What a lot of the awards were given out for, and if they knew that the student who the award was going to. Um, the amount of thought and processing that went into awarding certain students uh, certain uh, amounts of money. It wasn't really about the amount of money, it was to tie it to what the award was given for. So uh, Mr. Crombie and his, his team of guidance counselors and, and staff members who participate in choosing students um, is really time consuming and they put an awful lot of thought into it. And they also um, think from a, a mindset of equity, making sure that we are uh, doing our best to spread the wealth because there is a lot of money. Um, so uh, with the Facella Scholarship, there's very strict criteria that is um, a scholarship in which students have to write an essay and then there's a whole bunch of other criteria. Um, so it doesn't always go to the top 20 or top 16, in this case students you know, rank one through 16. Um, the criteria used to determine who gets those uh, amounts of money certainly helps you know, making an equitable distribution of the money. So uh, that's an awful lot of, of money to give out, and we're uh, very proud to be able to do it and help our students. And we all know what student debt uh, looks like. Personally, I'm living it every two seconds. Uh, with, you know, three students are either going to or have gone to college. So um, it certainly every little bit helps. Okay. What else? Okay, on the old business, the town council to vote to transfer 530000 from the general stabilization fund to the police personnel line. I believe that came out with a favorable That did come out of committee with a favorable recommendation. Okay. Anybody wish to be heard? Council President. Yes, sir. Now that this arbitration is complete and the town forced to pay $530,000, can you please review with us what went wrong here? Why did it go wrong, and what steps are we taking in the future to ensure something like this won't happen again? Um, okay. Um, can, we, we, can we really talk about this? Because it's still, it's still ongoing. ongoing. Yeah, I, yeah. Th we're still, on, we are still in court with this individual. It will not stop with just this is the best way to describe this situation. Do we really have any assurance then that this won't kind of continue to happen again and again and again and again? Um, we are trying very hard to um, train and incorporate policies into all of our departments 
to get our employees and our department heads in the position that um, employees know what's expected of them and the department heads know how to manage their employees correctly. Um, these are difficult situations to get into and unfortunately the town has gotten into a few of these situations um, and we are working very hard through multiple avenues to try to alleviate the stress of these situations and better prepare ourselves for the future. It's basically how pretty depth I can go on it, unfortunately. Thank you. Anyone else should be here? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Councilor Engman? Yes. Councilor Callow? Yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Boncori? Yes. Councilor Lacerda? Councilor Farino? Abstain. Councilor Laconte? No. Councilor Terry? Yes. President Vecchio? Yes. Six votes. Six votes. Yes. Did you think that was the second one too? It came out without you, but you want me to read it? Are you seven? Yeah. Okay. The second item <coughs> is in order that the council, um, council appropriate December five million five hundred and twenty-three thousand three hundred thirty-four dollars for the purpose for financing and engineering, design and construction of water systems improvements, source system improvements, drainage improvements, street and sidewalk improvements, and service connections for the Winthrop Center Business District, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto that to meet this appropriation. The treasurer with the approval of the town manager is authorized to borrow a set amount under and pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 7 and 8, or to pursue or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. That all in any portion of the amount authorized to be borrowed pursuant to this order may be borrowed through Massachusetts Clean Water Trust and in connection therewith, the treasurer and town manager are authorized to enter into a loan agreement and or security agreement with the trust and authorized to contract with the trust and the Department of Environmental Protection in respect to all such loans. That the town manager is authorized <coughs> to apply for, accept, and expend any federal and state of aid available for the project or to for the financing thereof and that the town manager is authorized to expend all funds available for the project and to take any other actions necessary to carry out this project. Any premiums received upon the sale of bonds, any notes approved by this order, lest any such <coughs> premiums apply to the payment of the cost of the issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied <coughs> to the payment cost approved by this order in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. The amount, total amount authorized to be borrowed by this order shall be reduced to the extent of any grants received by the town or account of this project. Is that out of finance? It is out of fi finance with no recommendation. No recommendation. So do I have a second on that motion? I'll second it. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Will call, please? Councilor Ingman? Yes. Councilor Callow? Yes. Councilor Christopher? Abstain. Councilor Boncori? Yes. Councilor Lacerdo? Councilor Farino? Yes. Councilor Lacanti? Yes. Vice President Letary? Abstain. President Vecchio? Yes. Yes. Okay. Under new business, the Town Council adopt the <coughs> Fiscal 2020 Town Manager General Fund Operating Budget. We have with us tonight the <coughs> Finance Commission. Uh, Bob, do you want to take the floor and make a, a report, sure. recommendation? Sure, <coughs> absolutely. Thank you and the members of the Commission for your hard work, along with members of the Finance Committee from the Council. You guys uh, met. Uh, what, about 25 times? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> Start back. Well, we appreciate the work. Yeah, you're right. We really do. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. We also appreciate it uh, working with the town manager and with the CFO and the um, assistant town manager. Uh, all three are new, so for us and them, this is kind of the first time we had to work together, and I think it was a good uh, project. I think the results were very good, and we appreciate the help. Uh, you know, the town manager's goals, as he stated, were consistent with the goals and financial concerns of the 
council and, in, and for the continued benefit of the community to maintain our financial integrity and to do our best to keep things strong as a community. The original budget was based on the governor's uh, budget, which contains some state aid for the communities in the, in the Commonwealth. The House budget, which came out not too long ago, actually increased that. And that's basically the, the budget that we have traditionally used, the House budget. Um, we met with Ann, uh, Anna to discuss the budget mid May, and they had made adjustments to reflect the House budget state aid figures, which between the reduction in assessments and increase in the revenues, meant an additional $178,476 for the town and winter to use within our budget process. So, uh, and that's a good thing. So we are re making our report based on that figure that's adjusted now, as opposed to the original budget. The other good news is that the Senate also prepares a budget, and they oftentimes have more state aid than the House budget allows. <coughs> they have a conference, they agree on an amount, and submit it to the governor for signature. So it's very possible that this figure will go up a little bit more when the state budget is finalized. The um, budgets that benefited from the change, there were six, are in the report that we prepared. Uh, the major beneficiary this year, fortunately, was uh, uh, the schools. They received another $113,726 in their budget appropriation as recommended by the town manager. And the report, uh, pages four and five, outline all of the changes as a result of the additional aid and reduced expenses. For the purposes of the budget, the general fund budget, which is property taxes, local receipts, state aid, the <clears throat> Massport and NWA payment in lieu of taxes, is $52,546,470. <clears throat> the enterprise funds, which are supported by the public through user fees, is $11,624,488. Revolving funds, which are a very small type of enterprise fund had a total combination of $185,754. And then there's a one-time transfer <clears throat> for capital purposes from the sale of land fund that totaled $509,423. The total revenues were $64,866,135, which is an increase over fiscal year 19, the year we're in, of $3,048,801. And that includes the one-time transfer for capital purposes of $509,000. Since this is a balanced budget, the expenses are the same, $64,866,135. There are several noticeable changes that I'll just mention. They're all, again, covered in more detail in the report. Um, the school has increased re revenue of, excuse me, increased operating expenses of $1,013,726. That's a 5% increase over the FY19 budget and represents about 54% of the available general fund revenue for the current 20 budget period. The town manager's budget, <coughs> we made it a, a suggestion that that be reduced by $35,000 to reflect the current salaries and positions that are currently there. And we also have recommended an increase of $10,000 in the professional association line. Uh, we are a member of the Metro Mayor's Coalition. They just assessed all of the members' communities uh, additional $10,000. It's the first time in a number of years that they've increased their uh, charge. It had been five, so now it's going to be a total of 15. So we felt that that's a necessary uh, association for us to belong to, and uh, we recommend that. And then we recommend that the balance of that 35000 which is 25000 be re returned to or be <coughs> transferred to the, <coughs> excuse me, the finance the, excuse me, the Town Council's Reserve Fund. 
So that would be an increase in the town council reserve fund of 25,000. All these changes that we're recommending are budget neutral, <clears throat> and some of the money goes to the reserve fund and the council, and then it comes back out for other purposes. The <clears throat> MIS department, um, which is a which is in need of revenue because we as a community are somewhat behind in the MIS area. The town manager recommended to eliminate a part-time unfilled position and put $17,000 of that toward <coughs> the licensing fees. And we also took from the increase in the house budget of $40,000 put into this budget also for IT program systems and, and updates, which the community is in need of. Another interesting increase is uh, in the regional dispatch center. Now, this is the one where our fire and police join with Revere's fire and police and the 911 call will go to a central distribution center and then it gets passed out to the appropriate departments and individuals. But the problem with this is a cost issue that we want to, to keep in, in mind. In fiscal year 17, the cost was 192000 This year, fiscal 20, we're looking at 450000 uh, That may not even be enough. There are some grants that are associated with this. We hope they continue. But I think at the end of the day, there's a lot of growth in this. Unfortunately, other communities have not joined, so it's just us and Revere. And as the cost increase, our share increases proportionately. And I think the last in the general fund category that we wanted to mention is this. This is a 989 fund that was established to help cover the expenses associated with the continued heating, lighting, uh, water of the old middle school in the center. While it's closed, it still has these expenses that are ongoing. And in fiscal 18, it was set up as an operating budget. In fiscal 19, the year we're in, <clears throat> I think it was not funded. I believe that was an error. Last year was not the easiest <laughs> process to go through. Uh, but it's a, and, and as a result of that, the town council has had to transfer money to pay those bills. We think this is an operating budget, maybe limited, hopefully it will be, that something will happen to the school. But in the short term, we know, just like snow and ice, we're going to have to pay some expenses, and we should fund those in advance, and then if necessary, the council will have to use reserve funds to supplement that. So we're recommending that that budget, which was funded in 18, not funded in 19, be funded again this year. Just quickly on the enterprise funds, now these are funds that are paid for by the users in the water and sewer is paid for by all, almost all of us because you have to use water and sewer so you pay for it. But um, the budget increase this year in the water and sewer is $1,130,261. The majority of that is for debt service. It's $826,800. And the debt service, I believe, is going to be a part of the Center of Business District project of water and sewer repair and replacement. Um, and there were also, as we all know, there are assessments associated with the MWRA. Those increased by just under $300,000 for the fiscal 20 year, 295, 514 to be exact. The, uh, the ferry, uh, fortunately, is not going to be requesting town money this year. Um, they have funded uh, through other municipal and state sources and through anticipated uh, ticket sales, and they do not think they will need a subsidy from the town, and we think that's great. The thing to keep in mind is that if at the end of the year there is a deficit, it's the responsibility of the town to fund the deficit. Uh, again, the revolving funds are a relatively small group. There was nothing that stood out in that. So at the end of the day, our recommendation is to fund the town manager's budget, modified with the house um, state aid figures, with the three changes we talked about, which, which the first was, excuse me, we talked about two of the three. The first was to amend the, <coughs> the town manager's budget to reduce the overall salary line item to return 25 to the Council Reserve Fund and to put 10000 into the um, Professional Association line item. 
Um, there's also uh, another provision we'd like to mention is that there are, um, in the salary line and the personnel lineup, there are some considerations for performance review, performance um, bonuses, etc. Those are something that the town council will eventually vote on and that the money that's being transferred out of the salary line item into your reserve fund, if appropriate, will be transferred, some of that will be transferred back to appropriate time. The second item is one we haven't discussed, and this is very minor, but as the human resource budget requested an additional $2,000 for training, and uh, that would bring their training line item up, up from 2000 to 4000 We think that's a worthwhile expense, given some things that we are all aware of. And I think that we would recommend that that be funded. The $2,000 would come out of the town council reserve fund and go into the uh, HRI department's training services line item. And the last item is the 989 fund, where we recommend funding that budget at $50,000. And we recommend taking the revenue for that from the employee benefit line item for town and school health insurance, 25000 out of each. We believe those are conservative <coughs> items. And if, in fact, there is any shortage in those, which would not be known until about this time next year, there would be other resources in town to return that money if necessary. So we think that's a source of revenue that will not impact those budgets, but will fund the appropriate money for the uh, 989 fund. So at the end of the day, all of this was budget neutral. The overall budget, general fund, enterprise funds, revolving funds, and the one-time capital are $64,866,135. And just one moment on the capital plan. The town manager put together a very extensive, well-thought-out capital plan. We support it. Um, it's being funded from a variety of sources. Two of the main funds are the transfer of 509423 from the sale of town land account into the general fund, and that would be one of the main sources of funding the capital plan for the next year. In addition, the $150,000 increase in the mass pilot program would also be added to the capital funding scheme. So those two would give us uh, 600 and Fifty-nine, almost six hundred sixty thousand dollars of available revenue. There are other sources as well, but those would be the two major. The uh, one one thing we have, and this is a little odd. This is not really a real financial thing, but the five hundred nine thousand dollars sale of land fund comes from the sale of Dalrymple School, and we believe that that fund was intentionally in, initially intended to be able to be used by the town for the purpose of purchasing property, purchasing, purchasing land, maintaining town property, and so forth. So what we're asking is that those funds be spread throughout the capital plan, but not for the IT portion, because we think it should be something that's more substantial, something that, you know, like equipment purchases, building repairs, um, and it is really more of a kind of a personal feeling that it is a financial business feeling. But we think that, that those IT-related projects can be funded, say, out of the mass pilot money. And if it's available to do that, we prefer to see the downfall school money be used in a more substantial fashion. There's one small minor thing that we've added or would request the council consider. And uh, this was a, from the fire chief, who's the emergency management chief uh, as well. The building that they operate in next door, apparently the heating system is pretty defective and he would like to add that to the capital plan and his request would be $5,000. Apparently he has $10,000 of resources from other, other places uh, that he has over time, but he's specifically asked for 5000 to repair the heating system in the building next door, which um, we've decided to add to this and it's up to the council, of course, to see if you want to add it now or just talk to the chief and look at it later. And just a couple of thoughts on the budget. 
the regional dispatch, we think it's a good idea. We just think that it intent when it was initially put together, the intent was that more communities would join and the cost would be spread out. Um, we know both chiefs are in favor of it. We talked to the town manager, and although he might, in some point in time, think about bringing it back, he's, he's not necessarily in favor of doing that without getting perhaps a new uh, public safety building or something of that kind. We were things can be controlled better. We, we tend to agree with that, but we just think that the cost is something that has to be looked at and considered, and that if, if it continues to grow, then we ought to really have a backup plan to see how we can get out of it, because I don't know if we can just get out at our will. We may have to give a year's notice. So whatever it is, we think that the council should just be aware that this, the cost benefit may not be here, and we think it should be looked at. Similar for the ferry. Um, we are not opposed to the ferry service. What we are kind of concerned about is Winthrop being in the ferry business, per se. Um, we've spent, as a community, over the time of the ferry, probably close to between, I don't know the exact number, but I'll say 400000 is probably right in the middle of where it is, of our revenue to pay for the operation of the ferry. Hopefully that won't happen this year, but there's no guarantee. It's one boat. It's heavily used. If it, if it has a mechanical failure that not, takes it out of service, we have obligations to other communities to fulfill. So it's a very complicated thing. It's nice, it's great, but um, it can be a financial disaster, I'm afraid, if things go the wrong way. So we just ask you to keep that in mind and to perhaps look at the, uh, again, these between budget years and calendar years and the ferry <coughs> service kind of, but at the end of this, of this calendar year, look at how this past ferry season went and see whether or not that is something we want to really seriously consider continuing or looking to do something else with it. Um, and then one last thing, and this is not a bad thing at all, that we are, the pension funding is very good on the part of it. I think one of our members looking to, and we're in one of the top 10 communities, we're right on uh, schedule to fund our pensions. We're doing really well. But there's another asset to retirement benefits called OPEB, which is uh, other post-employment benefits. And as a community, I don't think we've done quite as well on that. And we would ask the council to you know, consider that as we go forward to make sure the OPEB doesn't get, gets, doesn't get the attention it deserves and it should be funded to some degree. So um, that's basically it. We, we thank everyone for their cooperation. Uh, we thank the town manager, the assistant town manager, CFO, superintendent of schools and her, her people, and uh, all the town departments who we met with this year under town manager's <coughs> request, we met with many more department heads than we would have normally in the past. That gives some insight that we probably didn't have in the past either, so that's a good thing. And uh, I'd like to thank the members of the Finance Commission, which includes the three council members and the seven members of the Citizens Finance <coughs> Advisory Committee. So uh, thank you. We were here. With a couple of my members, if there are any questions, we'd be glad to address them. Any Thank questions you. from any of the councilors? Okay. Thank you, Bob. Thank Appreciate you. It. Town manager. So, um, actually, first I'd like to ask Anna to come up here as well, if you're, when you're prepared. Um, you know, this has been a long process. I'm excited that we're at this point. Um, you know, I've kind of reiterated multiple times. I've wanted the department heads to come here, and be able to advocate for things on their behalf, be in front of you, in front of the finance commission, and also with my office. I feel like it's been very important um, and transparent to have a public discussion about these topics. This is. $64 million in change of money, and it's very important that everyone gets the opportunity to advocate for their interest in it. So, um, with that, um, would you like my thoughts on the Finance Commission report? Mm -hmm. Sure. So, um, you know, it's a the first item is my department's budget, um, which is. Um, you know, we're, we're funded to a point. I would um, personally 
like to have that money, so I have the flexibility to utilize that without going through the process of requesting the money through a council meeting. Um, those are things like interns that I could have in my office um, or <coughs> moving money around um, within my own budget to cover different expenses. Um, in the past few years, we have had some issues with our legal expenses, um, and I would like to be able to have the flexibility to utilize that money. Um, I would a 25% increase in the town council reserve fund. Um, I'm not. Um, I'm not sure what that adds to your reserve fund. If there was a specific cost that you were looking for, or if there was something that um, was potentially falling by the wayside that you all would like to pay attention to, um, then I would understand it. But just the moving money, so there's more money at your discretion. So then. Um, me or a department head has to come here and ask you to move the money and go through the month and a half of the discussion on it um, is not um, necessarily the direction I would like to take, but I understand the position of the Finance Commission on it. Um, in terms of the human resources budget, um, I do agree with that one. Um, I think that um, HR needs um, an increase in their training um, and I would actually be more comfortable if that $2,000 actually came from my budget to cover that um, instead of the town council reserve fund and the town council reserve fund was um, level funded. Um, I, I do have the issue with moving money out of the um, GIC benefits lines. Um, I, and to kind of explain that a little bit, I want Anna to kind of walk us through her calculations and building it up. Um, so to provide some background on the numbers that were in uh, uh, for the GIC um, accounts in the town manager's budget, I went through our entire roster for the town and the town side and the school side um, based on the selections that that current employee, if they take insurance, what they have, updating based off the rates. I actually have a whole matrix where I've logged every single plan from GIC and I have numbers and I have their, I have their current rates um, and the portion that the um, portion of the premium that the town pays for each of those and I have in, every, in each cell the number of people that are currently in each of those things right now and what that projects out to be using new rates. Um, the model, so a couple things in terms of the numbers that were in the town manager's budget using that model. Um, we've had a couple of departments this year that have had somewhat unprecedented turnover. And so while we have had um, some buffer in our health insurance accounts this year, which we've used to do some cleanup to help pay for snow and ice costs, um, it's, I think it's a motion that was um, heard at the last meeting. Um, some of that I believe to be one time um, in light of the fact that we've had some understaffing. And so it is hard to predict um, when we hire up, are those people that will come online, will they take health insurance? And will they take low cost health insurance, you know, the cheapest individual plan, or will they take an expensive, more expensive family plan? And so the model that I have assumes everyone in their current place where they are now, um, and then it assumes a little bit of, assuming we staff up and those people take a plan, but you know, to the extent that people come on and they switch to family plans um, or any other movement, um, the, the numbers that are in the town manager's budget assumes less contingency than has been assumed in past years. And so I would strongly recommend against reducing the GIC numbers beyond what is in the town manager's budget. Um, those numbers already were sort of compressed on our end quite a bit um, based on the modeling that I did. And so the, the margins we have there are not as robust as, as they were this year and in previous years. And so it's certainly something that you want to be conservative there because not only do you want to make sure you can pay for the health insurance um, for the town school employees, but this year we've needed to clean some things up. It has been a source for us to go to to ensure that we didn't have to go to our stabilization funds to pay for some other areas in the budget that needed, that had some expenses that were um, larger than anticipated, um, or for example, snow and ice, where we haven't been able to fully proactively fund that. And so I, so just to explain that we had a we had a method behind the numbers that were in the town manager's budget that was down to me actually counting up in GIC roster reports every you know person and what plan they were in and how much that costs and then um, projecting out and attempting to fill in if we were to hire up you know kind of an average cost where those people might be uh, but again that assumes you know people people move into more expensive plans that number goes up um, and so I just wanted to give background on that and I, I it's related to the um, the um, moving money in, uh, into the, the 989, the special fund that helps pay for the middle school, um, sort of the utilities and the insurance there that, um, that wasn't accounted for proactively in the budget for the current year. I think understanding that we've had to pay for that for 
past couple of years, I think we view it somewhat <coughs> as a one-time expenditure because the goal is to sort of take that offline. And so it's something that um, we, maybe not necessarily ideally, but in light of sort of the priorities that I believe Austin articulated um, for the budget, to set aside, you know, to pay for that as those bills sort of come due. And we see, so we're only paying the exact amount for that, um, so that we're only sort of utilizing the resources that are specifically needed to pay the bills for that building until it's, until it, um, that is, it reaches a, sort of a, um, a conclusion of how that's, that building will be handled in the future. So um, that's why we, that's how we landed with the budget, uh, the budget numbers in the town manager's budget for the GIC and why um, when I, sort of new to my role, learned later in the process that we had this issue with the uh, middle school funding, why we didn't, um, why we haven't sort of um, advocated for moving money in there at this stage. Thank you, Anna. Um, otherwise, you know, <coughs> it was a pleasurable experience, or it was a pleasure to have the experience of working with the Finance Commission here. Um, There's a fair amount of meetings, Anna went to way more of them than I did, uh, but the kind of openness in the discussion through the budget was um, very good, and I was very happy that my department heads had the opportunity to speak with them, but um, I'm good with their report. They pointed out the things that um, we agree on a fair amount, and kind of where I am at this point. Questions? Ms. Cousins. Okay. No questions? No questions from that? <coughs> so yeah, so I'm going to read it. Yes, you can for the first time. Then we have a special meeting in two minutes. If not, then we have that special meeting in two minutes. Because it's going to tell us. I'm going to read the motion. So I'm going to put a motion on the table. Uh, and it, it, before I read the motion, the number on the motion is 53,055,893. Um, I believe that number is has to be changed to fifty two million five forty six four seventy five hundred and nine thousand of that money is is a transfer from the sale of land account which hasn't gone to finance committee yet so we can't vote on that until it goes to the finance committee so I think as Bob Wynn pointed out in the finance commission's report the net amount of the budget should be 52, 546, um, And under new business, we have a motion to go to transfer 509, which will go to finance in the next meeting and can be voted on that. Um, so I'm going to put a motion on the table and then we could have, I'm sure there'll be amendments and discussion. But pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 32, and in accordance with the charter of the Town of Winthrop, I move that the Town Council vote to adopt the Town Manager's proposed annual fund budget for fiscal year 2020 inclusive of personnel salaries and operating expenses set forth therein and that to meet said approach appropriation the town shall raise and appropriate the sum of fifty two million five hundred and forty six thousand four hundred and seventy dollars and I'm going to include in this motion and to take the recommendations given to us by, and to include the recommendations given to us by the Finance Commission, or take any other action relative there too. So I'll ask for a second for that motion, and then we could make it amendments, discussion, whatever I'll you'd like to do. Second. Peter, second. A second. Peter Christopher. Discussions? Council President. Yes. Um, well, uh, thank you very much for that motion, Council Letieri. I'm hoping that we may be able to split up the recommendations of the Finance Commission. Um, I am in favor of some of them, but not all of them. And um, it seems that we're putting it forward as a package deal at the moment. Well, we are putting it as a package. If you'd like to make a motion, you could absolutely um, make an amendment, include the, the debit and the credit, and it could be voted on and as we move on. And we could adjust the budget as accordingly as you would look, wish if you get the if we get the votes to pass an amendment okay um, well I understand that I think maybe it may be a little more clean to um, vote against this amendment and then to take each one individually which is the way I'd like to handle it 
Okay. So, is he make, are you making an, a motion? I am not making an additional motion at this time. Okay, so okay. I have motions to make. Um, if, don't we have to accept the and then do them at that point? Accept what? The motion you just we, put on one motion at a time? We have an acceptance. It's been second. Well, it's been second. If you discuss second, we're going to discuss it. Discussion. Now we're, to discuss discuss now we're just going on. Now we're discussing the budget. Okay. So I would like to make uh, two proposed amendments. Um, and first of all, before I go forward, I just want to thank Bob Wynn. He thanks everybody else, but doesn't thank himself. He's an incredible asset to this town. We're lucky to have him. He's been doing this for the last, well, he's been doing this in this form of government for the last 14 years. And then with the old Red Book days and town meeting days, I don't want to date you, so I don't want to say how long, but he's an incredible <laughs> asset to this town. He's invaluable, and I thank you for your help and support. I like Bob Wynn. <laughs> Amendments that I would like to make. The first um, is to the town clerk's budget, and it's more of a just reshaping. And I would like to make an amendment to transfer seven thousand dollars from line five one nine six zero zero stipends and move it to line five one 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 zero zero permanent employees. It's more of an accounting issue, um, and that's one thing that we we I think we we talked about in finance commission, but somehow we didn't make the motion. So I want I would like to. Ask for a second for that motion to be to add second, that. Second, second by Council Bartolo. Any questions on that Any motion? Any discussion? I, I'm not familiar with what we're with this. It's, uh, it's, it's actually it's more of a cleanup of, of yeah. the way. It's no change in the bottom line. No change in the budget. Changing the lines. Any further discussion on the motion? Uh, town manager, uh, did you have a, an opinion on this? This is with that budget. Um, I had, um, prior to my budget presentation, we had a meeting with the um, appointments committee where um, we discussed that um, my original intent was to use that stipend money towards um, a piece of software um, concerning uh, public records requests and things like that. Um, that said, if I take that stipend, it means we have a change in the compensation of that employee. Um, and at that meeting, um, the council expressed the desire to um, keep that employee at the same level of compensation. Any further discussion on the motion? On the amendment? Do you to vote on the amendment? Yep. Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. The second amendment I would like to make um, involves the schools and the school's budget. It's quite substantial. We all know that um, in 2019, they had a appropriation of 20 million 141,000 to change. This year, the original appropriation from the town manager's budget, and we thank him for that, was a $900,000 increase, which brought it um, 21 million 041 310 after a lot of discussion at the Finance Commission and again with the help of the town manager and the CFO we um, we got some more favorable news from the state and we added some of that money some of it chapter 70 money deservedly so went to the schools and we added some more to that which brought the appropriation up another hundred and thirteen thousand seven hundred and twenty six dollars which at that point is still about I know that the schools, the school committee voted unanimously to present a, a, a needs-based budget, which is roughly $2.8 million over last year. And the level of service budget is roughly 1.5-ish you know, over last year, 1.6, 1.5. Um, you know, we have a, a lot of work to do as a town as to how we're gonna finance not only the schools, but departments in general. Um, but the schools hold a special place, I think, in all of our eyes, because the future of the town depends on what's inside that school and the children there. So I am going to make a motion that we transfer $120,000 to the school department line 300. And I'm gonna use the following line items to compensate for that 120,000. The first one being line 578100, the council reserve, and reduce that $23,000. The second one would be line item 517220, which is unemployment from the schools, 
and reduce that by 20,000. The third one would be 517520 group insurance from the schools and reduce that by 42,000. The fourth one is line item 517510 group insurance from the town, reduce that 25,000. And the fourth, the last one was um, line item 517500 group insurance, retirees, reduce it by 10,000. Now that comes out to 120,000. I've listened to the town manager and the CFO and, and they all have valid points and we could go over every line and every, and, in this whole budget. Um, I do believe, I've been doing this now for 14 years, we've had one year where there was not a, a, a very comfortable surplus in those lines and that was a year that <coughs> a prior town manager, you know, after we voted on the budget, took a, a large amount and, and used it for something, another department. So other than that, not we're not trying, and I know the town manager is not trying to create free cash, nor uh, is that the policy of the town. Um, we've been trying to budget much more closer to actuals than incurring buffers. But I think, you know, within the town, we have the ability relatively easily to make transfers to cover items if we need. To make a transfer to the schools is much more uh, cumbersome for the schools and for the town and although this would still bring them more than three hundred thousand dollars less than their level of service I, I do think it's it brings them close to a point where they can offer what they've offered this year um, with much less of a burden to the children um, so I do make that motion. I know it involves multiple groups. I, I you know, we don't have just an unlimited source of funds to just say I want to take $120,000. Um, so I do put that a, motion on the table. We have a second to the motion second. on the table. It's been seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Just, just a question. Council Bocori. Is, is this 4225 and 10 that we're taking out of the uh, retirement and, and the insurance? In addition to the 25 yes yeah, so it would be you're looking at a hundred and twelve thousand dollar um it said the hundred twenty two hundred and twelve thousand dollar um total from those two lines now my reasoning for that is again there was not an unlimited pool of money i know that these are relatively tight budgets as it is I do feel that, you know, we just had motions last week and I know the CFO has done a ton of work along with the town manager to try to get closer to actuals on these numbers. Um, but I do feel, I think the, the population of the school's um, staff uh, we know is a relatively young population and unfortunately, fortunately, getting younger and young, younger where we don't have a lot of the tenured teachers that have been there for years and years to give us the support which is um, a tough thing and a totally another issue, but in terms of this, it's, it's somewhat of a positive because we have a lot of cho children. <laughs> to me, anyone under 40 is a ch child, but we have a lot of younger professionals who are still under their parents' plan working or taking uh, single plans. We're not hoping for the, you know, I, I don't think I'm like shooting for the moon and saying that, geez, everything has to align just perfectly for this to work. I still think, um, we will have some sort of buffer. Obviously, it will be $120,000 less than it would have been. Um, and if there have to be adjustments made during the year, there still is adjustments made during the year. I do understand the town manager's um, concern on the uh, increase to the town council reserve. Um, so this basically brings it back, well, it does bring it back to level funding because I think there was $2,000 going back someplace else. So I think this brings that back to level funding, which is still less than what we've had over the past, not last year, but in years previous. Um, we, well, that's all I'm gonna say on this motion right now. Mm -hmm. Unless you have another question. Can, can I ask for a short recess? Sure. Um, can I have you and you and Denise and Dave and Ann, please? The council's in recess. Back in session, we have uh, some procedural issues with the previous motions that were on the table and amendments. So I'll recognize uh, Council Uh I'm, I'm going to make a motion that I, and this is strictly procedural and you'll see as it goes on, but I'm just going to make a motion that I uh, 
withdraw my original motion on the budget, the original motion for the budget, to accept the town's budget. A motion was made, do I have a second on that? Second? I'm sorry, can you the second? That? The verbiage on the original motion uh, was misstated, so I want to withdraw the original motion and basically just, we just start, start from, scratch from scratch and go over again. So we're going to cover the same, okay. the same. Peter issue. has to withdraw the second. Peter has to withdraw the second. Where is he? Okay. <laughs> Do we really need to wait for him to withdraw the second? Does he have to withdraw the second? Yeah. Does he have to the motion's gone, the motion's gone, right? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay, the original closer. So let's start from scratch. Motion to withdraw my original motion on the proposed budget. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing nothing, let's take a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. Okay. Why don't you let Pete go look at it? Pete, it's not noble. <laughs> Pete, we're withdrawing everything we've done. Okay. There was a couple of procedural issues, so we're starting from scratch. See okay. 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 Yeah. You have to withdraw your second because we made a new one. Yeah, we go. Okay. 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 Right. Great. Council Interior. All right. Pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 32, and in accordance with the Charter of the Town of Winthrop, I move that the Town Council vote to adopt the Town Manager's proposed <coughs> annual general fund budget for fiscal year 2020 inclusive of personnel, salaries, and operating expenses set forth therein, and that to meet set appropri uh, appropriations, the town shall raise the appropriate and appropriate the sum of $53,055,893 or take any other action relative thereto. Motion has been made. Do I hear a second? Wait a minute. For purposes of discussion. You're raising it by a million dollars? No, I'm, I'm just going by the original motion. We'll and go to the, the original, original motion. Can you repeat the number? Yes. The original is to appropriate, to raise and appropriate the sum of fifty-three million, that's fifty-five thousand eight hundred ninety-three dollars, which the, is the original motion submitted by the town manager. Second, I'm asking for a second on that. We have a second. Discussion. Discussion on the motion. All right. First, I would like to make a motion that we accept the finance commission's recommendations on such You're making budget. an amendment. I'm making an amendment to accept the Finance Commission's recommendations. Okay. Second. Uh, is there a second on the amendment? Second. Seconded by Perino. Any discussion on the amendment? Council President, uh, yes. Um, I would like to make an amendment to this amendment that we remove the 989 fund $50,000 from this um, amendment. Um, so in other words, we, re um, we will not reduce line 517510 group insurance uh, by $25,000 or reduce line 517520 group insurance by $25,000. I'll second that. Motion, the amendment has been seconded. Any discussion on that amendment? I'm getting a little confused here. Well, so right now we have the main motion. You're supposed to pull out that other amount. I'm going to that's the next motion. Okay. So we've got the main motion of the budget, yep. and now we've got the Finance Commission's recommendations, and now what we are about to vote on is to remove that third recommendation of the 989 fund to fund the middle school Correct. out of um, the, what we will ultimately vote on. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. So there's a second. And we have a second. We have a second. Right, Council. Just to, um, I, I appreciate Councilor Leconte's uh, motion. And um, again, we went through hours and hours and hours of meetings. Um, I did discuss with our town council auditor, Dick Kingston, who informed me that his best practice is always to, if you have a known expense, to try to fund it. Um, we had funded this two years ago. It was taken out of the budget last year, with a, which was... Um, a, a very tough budget cycle. Uh, we are trying to do dil dil due diligence and put it in. We know there are going to be expenses there, and uh, we thought it was appropriate to set aside the amount of money that would cover most of the, most if not all of those expenses. And if I may ask, Council President, my thinking with this motion is that um, while this may in fact be a cost that we do have to fund eventually, it seems to me that um, 
this should be difficult for us later on in the year when we have to make that appropriation. The middle school site has been sitting there for so long, stagnant, without making any revenue. I want the people of Winthrop to kind of have to see us do it individually and separately as a marker of our progress. Are we making this happen or not? And that's why I think we should take this out. And if we do have to do it, do it separately at another meeting. Yeah, I, I just would like to note that with this, it's, if past practice is any uh, teller of what's going to happen this year, we're still going to have to vote on this again if the if the building is vacant. If the the amount that the finance commission has suggested we appropriate is not going to be enough for this fiscal year. So at some point during the next year, we're going to have to make this appropriation anyway. So if the issue is that we want to notify the public that we're spending this money. Um, we're going to have to anyway. The fifty thousand dollars won't cover it. Um, so I, I, I think that while it's a valid point, and I think that the public should know that we're spending this money, uh, the notice is tonight. The notice is going to happen at the end of the year. Um, so that's just my two cents. So I can make a motion. Well, he made the motion. Okay. Vote on the amendment. I, okay. okay. Vote we'll give it back. So perhaps it makes sense to vote on my amendment, and yeah. then we can yeah. get back yeah. to the larger yeah. amendment. Special Terry. Hearing none, let's take a vote in his amendment. I would oh. ask roll call. You want a roll call? Councilor Ingman? Yes. Councilor Callow? No. Councilor Christopher? No. Councilor Bob Corey? No. Councilor Lacerdo? Councilor Farina? No. Councilor Conti? Yes. Vice President Loteri? No. President Vecchio? Yes. And then it does not pass. Yeah, well, on the original thing, on the original amendment to accept the finance commission's recommendations, I'd like to make an amendment to that. Council President, I'd like to go back to the town manager's original recommendation uh, to read the twenty-five thousand dollars instead of going to the town council reserve, it to remain in the personal services permanent employee line five one one zero zero, as requested. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Second by Councilor Ingman. Discussion on the motion? Why? Why? Why do I? You want to know why? Yeah. Well, first of all, I think the town manager, we hired this gentleman to run the town. And, you know, if he lays out a budget and a plan of attack uh, to do the things that he needs to do to run this place and to make changes, then he should, you know, we should have that confidence that he's got the money to do it. Instead of having to go back to the council and get it from the town council reserve fund, that's my feeling. Any other discussions on the amendment? Well, let me just ask. Yes, so who, made, who made the initial um, motion to, to do this to take that twenty five thousand? This was made by the finance commission. It was deemed after looking at the salaries that there was um, an overage. For the, sal for the known salaries in the department, there was an overage of about $30,000. In the town so manager's that, budget. In the town manager's budget. Um, so the finance commission, seeing the budget as tight as it is, thought it would be appropriate to uh, make a recommendation that that money go back to the town council reserve. Um, obviously, the town manager, like any other department heads, if they need money, they go through an appropriation and it will go to the town council for a set amount. But that being the town manager's budget gives him a latitude to, to do things, whether he was talking about if he has to hire somebody temporary for a project or whatever. And now we have to go to the town council reserve fund? Why are That's we, the why same are as we any more important department. than the town manager's department? We're not more important. We're the, we're the executives of the town manager. I understand. And, and He's running the day-to-day -day -day operation. I think each department has an allotment to cover their personnel. Is the way the finance but commission felt. You have the gap, Roy. That's right. So, so are there any more, <laughs> there any more <laughs> discussion on the amendment? You should be talking. You're not asking me questions. Question. Question. Council Bob like Carter. It, it really doesn't matter. If Finance Commission is asking us to do this, they must have a reason for asking us to do this because there's an excess there. The town council can always come to us at any meeting and ask us for more money, and we can give them that money in the future. So I, I think it's the principle. I think we should there. go with the Finance Committee. We've been doing this for the past. 30 years, at least. Any other discussion on the motion, Council President? Um, seeing none, there's a motion to vote on uh, Council President's amendment to 
uh, as discussed earlier. Uh, roll call vote, please. Councilor Engman? Yes. Councilor Callum? No. Councilor Christopher? No. Councilor Boncori? No. Councilor Lacerda? Councilor Frino? No. Councilor Conti? No. Vice President Letary? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> Pass right President Vecchio? Yes. Amendment does not pass. Pass. So the original amendment is still on the floor to accept the Finance Commission's recommendation. Okay. Should we move on that? I would, Any further move. discussion on accepting the Commission's recommendation on the budget? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Councilor Ingman? Yes. Councilor Kella? Yes. Councilor Christopher? <coughs> yes. Councilor Boncori? Yes. Councilor Cerdo? Councilor Farino? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Cal Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Vecchio? Yes. Motion passes. Mr. President, I'd like to make an amendment that we remove $509,423 from the budget request coming from a one-time transfer from capital. Um, this is why the original motion that I had made didn't include that. Um, this is an item that's going to be coming before us some point tonight or early tomorrow morning. Um, that's going to ask us to transfer the 509, which is then going to have to go to finance, and then finance will come back at the next meeting with a recommendation. So, as of now, I don't think it's appropriate that it be included in this budget. So, I ask to reduce the budget by 509,000, which would make the uh, the new appropriated sum 52 million five hundred and forty six thousand four hundred and seventy dollars. Is there a second on the motion? A second on the motion. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll vote. Roll call. Councilor Ingman? Yes. Councilor Calla? Yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Boncori? Yes. Councilor Cerdo? Councilor Frino? Yes. Councilor Conti? No. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Vecchia? Yes. Amendment passes. Council President, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, transfer $7,000 from the town clerk's budget line 519-600 stipends and move it to line 511-100 permanent employees. Any second on the motion? Second. second. Discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. I'd like to make one more motion that the, as discussed in length earlier, that the town increase the school department budget $120,000 line 300 with the public schools and reduce the following line items 578 100 town council reserve reduced by $23,000 517 220 unemployment schools reduced $20,000 line item 517 520 group insurance schools reduced $42,000 Line item 517510, group insurance town, reduce $25,000. And line item 517500, group insurance retirees, reduce $10,000. Any second on the motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? No discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Roll call. Council Ingman? Yes. Council Gallo? Yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Boncori? Yes. Councilor Lucerto? Councilor Farino? Yes. Councilor Lacanti? Yes. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Vecchia? Yes. Amendment passes. Um, Mr. President, I'd like to make an amendment um, to reduce uh, the 989 revolving fund in town uh, by $25,000 and the town council reserve by $20,000 and add $45,000 to 511100 to permanent employees and inspectional services. Um, in regards to the sources, I think that, uh, like Councilor Leconte had mentioned earlier, this uh, 989 fund, uh, as, as it's being put into the budget, um, it's important that we have the opportunity to continue to discuss this because it's not something that I hope uh, we have a, uh, as a permanent situation going in uh, throughout the year. 
And as far as the um, town council reserve, uh, if you compare it to what we had last year, this is something that um, we are still in a much better position than we would have uh, otherwise. Um, over the past six months, we have been doing a lot of work uh, with all the department heads. We've interviewed a lot of people on the finance commission. And one of the most daunting or um, impactful stories that was given to me uh, was the one from inspectional services. Um, I think that with uh, the new growth that we have in the town that's coming, which is unprecedented new growth, um, the amount of condo conversions and building that we have going on throughout the town, um, it's something that we really need to be keeping up with. Presently, we only have uh, part-time inspectional services code enforcers. Um, and I know that that's something that my constituents are constantly um, making, not necessarily complaints, but reporting violations of the code. And it's something that I think that we should be working on to make sure that the town is staying up to date on. Um, I applaud the town manager's efforts in this regard to bring, a techno uh, bring the technology of the department up to date, but I don't think that uh, a mere improvement in technology is going to get us to where we need to be. Um, especially given the fact that we're pondering a lot of new developments in the town, um, and this is development that the town has uh, previously not taken uh, or has very little experience <coughs> in development of the scale. I think it's imperative that we have the type of staff um, on, uh, in the inspectional services department that can handle these new challenges that Winthrop is going to be, is going to be facing. Um, and I think it's important that we uh, work to make sure that we at least have one full-time person who could be dedicated to doing this work. Um, I also note that with the, uh, with the hiring of a full-time code enforcer, there would also be uh, potential, to potential to increase our revenue um, on, not that this is the goal of what you want to do in code enforcement, but that they would be uh, writing tickets. So it might make a little bit more sense budgetarily. Um, when we interviewed the director of inspectional services, um, that was something he said that would all, would you know almost make up for the cost. Um, so I think that it's important that the town keeps up to date on this, and I urge everyone to support the amendment. Uh, is there a second on the amendment? Uh, I'll second the amendment for the discussion. Can I just ask where the funds are coming from? Yeah, could you repeat that? The uh, revol 989 revolving fund that we just moved put money into and town council reserve. And what were the amounts? 25 from the revolving fund and 20 from town council reserve. Council Christopher, if I may, Council President, uh, just to confirm what the um, positive impact would be, so this would be to hire a full-time code enforcer in inspectional services? I don't know if I could pigeonhole it, but I know that that was what the inspectional services department had asked for when they came to the finance commission. And this would sort of be a continuing expense that would be committed to with a new employee then, correct? Well, we already, it's not, would not be a new time, a new full-time employee. This would be making a part-time employee a full-time employee. Someone who's already um, gone through the process of getting certified in this. Town manager, do you have any comment? I have a question. Oh. I'm sorry. Um, where did you come up with the 40? So are you saying that this person is going to make $90,000? Is this a I don't. I didn't want to get into the personnel issue that comes along with it, but I think that this would be sufficient to cover it. Um, and I would hand that off to the department in order to get that, um, to figure out how much the person would make and whatnot. I, I can't agree more that it would be extremely important and, and good for the town in so many ways to, to make that part-time person full-time. Um, I just think that the amount might be a little high. Um, it, and I, I hate to use the 989 fund that we just set up. And I know there's limited, limited choices um, to, uh, well, I guess I would first like to make a, an amendment to, to make that number 30,000 instead of 45, uh, just for. In what Which ways? One? To make that 30,000 instead of 45 and to, um, <coughs> I would make the amendment to, that we um, take it off. Council take the 30,000 off, I'm sorry? Take it off from council reserve? No, I would make the motion that we take it from uh, the veterans benefit line item five seven seven one zero zero. It's a um, it's a fund that was uh, a little overfunded this year. It's also a fund that we're obviously like Snow and Ice obligated to pay. So if there is if 
additional claims put in, obviously the veterans are going to get uh, paid for that. So there's an amendment to your amendment. Do, do you want to accept? Is it for the whole amount? Generally? It would be for the thirty thousand. Yes. Um, it's not up to me, but. Yeah. No, you don't have yeah. to agree with it. No, I, just I, I don't. It, yeah. Somebody has one second yeah. making the change. So Do I have a second? Like, no, I'd like Jim to explain that again. So the entire 30000 is coming from? Uh, from the uh, okay. Veterans Benefit Line 577100. That's a, it's, a, it's an obligation that the town is absolutely 100% obligated to pay and, and should. And I think Rose has done an incredible line managing that, an incredible job managing that. But it's also um, a line item that was over this year. Um, and if it is underfunded, obviously it would have to come back to the council. I, I mean, nobody's not going to get funded because of that. Let's put it that way. It, yeah, if that's the consensus, I think that that's fine with me. Do you want to withdraw your motion? No, we can just, 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 just amend it. Okay. So you're going to amend it to your numbers of 30,000 coming from the veterans. Five, five, seven, seven, one, zero, zero. And 30,000 going to, I'm not sure if your line had to be. Of the it is inspectional set five one 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 zero zero. Okay, is there? Did somebody second it? I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion on the amendment to the amendment? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll vote on. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? No. no. The chair is questioned. Let's take a roll call. Councilor Ingman? No. Councilor Callow? <laughs> this money can go back. Oh, it has to. Yes. It has to. That, I don't no, want to they, take anything you know, from it. It's just like snow, it's like snow and ice, unfortunately. And obviously, um, <coughs> you know, again, she's done an incredible job managing this. We had a motion last week at our meeting where we uh, used some of that money to offset snow and ice this year. Um, obviously, if that's underfunded, we would absolutely, it, it's not even a question of if we would, it's a mandate, which we would 100% approve. Okay, and I'll say yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Moncori? Yes. Councilor Lucerto? Councilor Farino? No. Councilor Conti? No. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Becchio? No. <laughs> but yeah, we'd need five votes for it to pass, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we'd need a, don't, it, it, we just need a, a yes, right. yes. Okay, so back to the original motion. Okay. Well, um, if, if I could, on the original motion, I, I love the idea of getting some more help into inspectional services. I'm uncomfortable with even the, the original um, funding sources uh, out of the town council reserve. Um, and, and maybe this is, this is, I don't know if this would win you any support, but um, I, I'd be happy to take it all the 989 fund, but I don't want to take any more out of the Town Council Reserve Fund. Okay. That's why I made the motion. The amendment for 30 didn't pass, but the main motion of 45 is still there. Right. right. I'm gonna make a, I'd like to make an amendment to that to reduce that um, amount to 30,000 and to take um, 10,000 from 989 and, and 20,000 from Council Reserve. I'll second that. Amendment's been made and seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, take a roll call vote, please. I, I'm sorry, um, can you go over what the amendment is again? The amendment is to reduce the amount from 45000 to 30000 and to take 10000 from 989 and 20000 from Council Reserve, which I know you don't want. And I don't disagree. This is on. Is an amendment to the 45,000 to make it 30. 30. Same funding sources, just different amounts. Okay, so the last one that's closed. Yes, it's still the party. Okay, let's take a vote. Roll call. Councilor Ringman? Yes. Councilor Callum? Yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Boncori? Yes. Councilor Sordo? Councilor Farina? No. Councilor Conti? Yes. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Vecchia? No. Amendment passes. So the, any further amendment? Yes. That was the amendment yeah. to his amendment. Right. You right. still have to yeah, vote. Correct. Yeah. Amendment. All right. 
Right. Just making sure. Yeah, as amended. And I'm sorry, could I just get another recap on $30,000 and how much from each fund is that coming from? Uh, 10000 from 989 and 20000 from Council Reserve. Thank you. Uh, and what was the main uh, Concerning the additional funding. Additional funding for 30000 going to inspection services. So one item I wanted to note concerning the additional compensation for our part-time employees. I wanted Dave Rodriguez to just hit on that quickly, the two employees that are part-time. Sure, the two, the two employees that are currently part-time, uh, code enforcement agents proper. Uh, one serves part-time as a code enforcement agent, the other serves the animal, in his other part-time position, the animal control officer. Uh, so he does have full-time responsibilities in that regard. Uh, the other part-time code enforcement agent is also a local building inspector. Um, so uh, we'd have to take a look at his current compensation structure to see if he would have the bandwidth uh, within his current uh, his current responsibilities to absorb uh, full time responsibilities. Uh, if not, this would include adding a part timer um, in that regard. So it's uh, going within the existing structure might might do. You have any comment about um, the motion? <clears throat> I understand the pressing need that you all see in inspectional services. Um, I would um, ask for some patience in terms of um, that department and uh, the modernization of it before uh, we bring on additional staff um, to attend to some of our issues that we have in town. Um, I'd much rather uh, know that we are moving in the right direction in that, and we are being attempted to all of the needs of the town um, rather than kind of piecemeal fix these types of things. So um, although I understand um, the need and the um, argument that's made from the department, um, I would respectfully disagree with um, the need for the transfer at this point in time, or the amendment. Okay. So now we're going to the original. The, the amended, the amended, oh, amended. Yeah, the amended motion. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, want to give us the amended motion? The amendment to the amendment is reduced to thirty thousand. Yeah. To the inspection services coming out of town council reserve twenty thousand out of nine eighty nine ten thousand. Okay. Second by Peter. In the past. New amendment to amendment. That's just the amendment now, we're just voting on it. Right. We voted the amendment, now we're voting the, the original. The original voting amendment. on the motion as amended. Okay. As amended. Councilor Engman? No. Thank you. Councilor Callum? Yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Moncori? Yes. Councilor Sordo? Councilor Farino? No. Councilor Conti? No. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Vecchio? No. Does not pass. Make a motion. Uh, I, <laughs> I no, I, I don't have any other motions. I would like to thank the town manager and CFO as Bob has done and, and Dave also the assistant um, town manager. It's an incredibly complicated budget that um, you know, for a small little town, maybe we make it more complicated than it is, but it, we do, we might not all agree, but I think we all agree, we, we think we want what's, we, we all agree that we want what's best for Winthrop. We might have different visions of it and different thoughts and ideas, but it's an incredible amount of time put in by a lot of people to try to get this somewhat right, and it will never be perfect. Um, you know, we have two other accounts, derelict properties and pest control that aren't funded that I would love to try to make an amendment to, to, to see some funding going to, but I, I just don't know where to take it from at this point. Um, it's, we don't have a cash rich, but rich budget. Uh, we do have decisions that we're going to have to make uh, over the next couple of years, but I, I do commend the town manager, the CFO, and the assistant town manager for the diligent work and effort that they put into this budget. I know it wasn't easy. Uh, I know Anna spent an awful lot of time here, and, uh, and I thank her for that. Thank you very much. We're not through yet, though. No. <laughs> Town Council to vote to transfer a five hundred nine thousand four hundred twenty-three. Can we say? No, no, no. We no, have no, to vote no. the budget. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're used to proposing. Okay. Schools aside, stuff too. You never propose that again. 
Yeah, you did put the schools at 120. Yeah, I did. We did. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, did. That's the budget as yeah. a bed. Yep, we did the school. Sorry. <coughs> so do you want to read as amended? I did. Yeah. We did. No, we did it right after the after the town rail. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so back to the original motion with all the amendments is to uh, accept the town manager's proposed budget for the fiscal year 2020 inclusive of all personnel, salaries, and operating expenses set forth within and that to said meet appropriations the town shall raise and appropriate the sum of fifty as amended, fifty two million five hundred and four. Forty-six thousand four hundred seventy dollars, inclusive of all amendments made tonight. Amendments. The motion with amendments. All in favor? Well, we'll do a vote. Five percent. Second. 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 Do we have a second? Yes. Second. Second. Council <laughs> board. <laughs> we get the punch drop now. Council Raymond. Yes. Council Gallo. Yes. Council Christopher? Yes. Council Boncori? Yes. Council Lucerto? Council Frino? Yes. Council Conti? Yes. Vice President Letieri? Uh, yes. <laughs> President Becky? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Town Council to vote the transfer of 509423 from the sale of pro town property to the new general fund special article FY20. Capital project. Motion we for finance. Okay. The town council authorized continuation of all revolving funds in accordance with general laws chapter 44 section 53 E and a half. Do I hear a second? Second. This is housekeeping, is it? Yes. Not it's just to authorize the revolving second. funds. Okay. okay. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. And I have another motion, if I can find it. I have it right here. If you want. I have it right here. As you recall, we've, uh, there's been a, a lot of uproar about the cost of water and so forth, and we've received a petition, council received a petition, and and town manager has been working diligently to try to find a way for us to get some facts and so forth. So one of the things we wanted to do that we were requested by the petition was to have an audit done of the water department. So this is submitted by the town manager. The motion, I move that the Winthrop Town Council issue the following order relative to an audit of the town of Winthrop Water Sewer Enterprise Fund in accordance with MGL C11. 12. The order, in accordance with MGLC 1112, the Winthrop Town Council hereby authorizes and requests that the Department of the State Auditor to make an audit of accounts, programs, activities, and other public functions of the Water Sewer Enterprise Fund of the Town of Winthrop to the extent determined necessary by the State Auditor, provided that the expenses incurred for any such audit shall be borne by the town of Winthrop and the state auditor may charge for the cost of said audit. It further be ordered that the town manager coordinate the town efforts and before the commencement of requested audit, report to the town council and advise as to the cost, process, and response of the state auditor. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Yes. Council President. Yes, sir. Um, so I'm as unhappy with the water sewer rate as anyone. Um, I'm just sort of wondering what this audit exactly is going to accomplish. Um, and if it were for free, I'd say, whatever, let's do it. But um, exactly what kind of costs are we looking at here? That's what we need to request from the state auditor's office. Um, this is a formal letter that we need to send to them requesting the audit. Um, this is something that... Um, in working with the community concerning this issue that uh, they have made it very known to my office that they would like us to engage with the state auditor's office concerning this audit um, and we will, we will see how they respond on it accordingly and um, deal with it accordingly. Um, that said, I can't anticipate the costs 
um, off the top of my head of what that would look like. Um, but this is kind of formality to see how they come down on it if they're even willing to do an audit. And does approval of, of this motion sort of force us into getting the audit regardless of how much it costs? Do nope. we then have a second bite at the apple where we get a cost and they can say yay or nay? Yes. Okay. Yep. No, we're not going to spend money without coming to you and asking for it. Um, and there's also, um, in addition to that, um, there will probably be additional discussion. Um, if this isn't the right avenue to go down, it would go down if there are additional avenues concerning like tier structures and um, having someone look at our water rate and talk, do some of the community meetings on it and stuff like that. So there's a couple different avenues we're looking at for it, but this is um, one of the more prudent steps that we feel like answers a question that the community was asking for. Thank you. Okay, Council. Any further discussion? Questions? Comments? Ready for a vote? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Public comment? No, I think I'm going to Just uh, one quick thing, and, and um, way back to correspondence, and I'm just looking at Julia's map, and it reminded me of the zoning map in the Senate Business District. Like Council Farina reminded me about, and I just, I, I, I know we're not we, talking about that. No, we're not going to. I just want to, um, I know we've had correspondence um, regarding the map, and, and I had hoped to vote in this meeting, but we're waiting for the planning board to have their subsequent meeting, and then they should be um, coming back to us, hopefully, in one of our meetings in uh, either late June or early July. Yes, that is the intent. Yep. Okay. Um, I have, so. Sure. So, um, an item that was not listed under new business is concerning the enterprise funds, and we feel that it would be prudent. The information is in your packet. It wasn't on this, but um, as a separate vote in the past, you have voted kind of the budget in an omnibus fashion, and this time we wanted to make sure there were separate votes on um, each individual enterprise fund. I would. Um, like you to consider it if you are willing to. I know that it is not on the agenda, um, but all of the materials are in your packet concerning the different funds. Denise had um, passed that along to you. Um, I think it would be prudent at this point in time to vote on those. If you don't feel comfortable with that, then it's going to be a necessity that when you have a subsequent meeting concerning the authorization to transfer, that you have that discussion there. Do you have a motion prepared? I have all of them. Yep. I don't think they're. They're not in. There should be five. Uh, no. Yeah. One moment. Let me just. There's got to be. Well, well it's in this part of the Okay. So, mm -hmm. let, me, uh, let me correct what I just said. We can have a special meeting on that one because of the timing issue with it. So, if you don't vote on it, then it is accepted as proposed in the budget. Um, if we don't vote by June seventh, it's that part of the budget would be accepted because it's within the forty-five days, or it would exceed the forty-five days. That so by correct. the charter, it would automatically be accepted. That is correct. So, so if somebody has a problem with the enterprise the funds, they should speak now. Otherwise, really sure. that's the amount that the finance committee said was eleven thousand, eleven million six hundred twenty-four thousand. Yes. Yes. Which, we, which we did accept as part yeah, of the motion. We did accept all the amendments. It, it was not part of the, under, the underlying motion is general fund dollars. I know. So I know, but yeah, by accepting their amendments, you are. The Finance Commission did recommend accepting the enterprise funds as is. Yeah. And by us, we didn't officially vote the enterprise funds, mm -hmm. but by not voting, we're basically accepting them as is if we don't vote by Friday the 7th. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I'd be happy to make a motion if, if we feel more comfortable making the motion, but the charter does state if you do not act within 
45 days of the town manager presenting the council with the budget, the budget and all its attachments become um, become law. So, um, but if we have the figure to care for the finance. Why not just make a motion to approve that figure for all of the oh, prices at one time? It's all the word documents that are open. There are five, five specific motions for each one. Um, if you would like me to read the motion, I can read the motion. Okay. Uh, I thought I could. Um, <laughs> Text and motion pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 32, and in accordance with the Charter of the Town of Winthrop, I move that the Town Council adopt the Town Manager's proposed Harbor Master Enterprise Fund budget in accordance with General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53, and have to be funded at $369,666. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on yeah, the motion? Okay. 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 Any discussion on the motion? Okay. Roll we'll call. This is on the Harbor Master. This is the Harbor Master budget. Harbor Master. Councilor Ringman. Yes. Councilor Callum. Yes. Councilor Christopher. Yes. Councilor Boncori. Yes. Councilor Soto. Councilor Farino. Yes. Councilor Conti. Yes. Councilor Terry. Yes. President Beckett. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Council President, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 32, and in accordance with the Charter of the Town of Winthrop, I move that the Town Council adopt the Town Manager's proposed ferry enterprise budget in accordance with the General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53, uh, to be funded at $460,000. Motion to May. Do I hear a second? Which budget was it? That's this the ferry enterprise ferry. fund. Ferry. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Council President, this just for um, the public, this is not having any um, uh, any appropriation from the town in this budget, just to let the, the town know. Roll call. Councilor Hingman? Yes. Councilor Callum? Yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Boncori? Yes. Councilor Lacerdo? Councilor Perino? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Beckham. Yes. Thank you, yes. Town Manager pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 32, and in accordance with the Charter of the Town of Winthrop, I move that the Town Council adopt the Town Manager's approved proposed water and sewer enterprise budget in accordance with General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53, to be funded at $10,136,027. Motion has been made. A second? <laughs> second. Do I have a second? Yes, second. Any discussion on the motion? Sure. Hearing none. Roll call, please. Councilor Raymond? Yes. Councilor Callum? Yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Boncori? Yes. Councilor Lasorto? Councilor Frino? Yes. Councilor Leconti? Yes. Vice President Lettieri? Yes. President Vecchia? Yes. Motion passes. Council President, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 32, and in accordance with the Charter of the Town of Winthrop, I move that the Town Council adopt the Town Manager's proposed Recreation Enterprise Fund budget in accordance with General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53, to be funded at $337,748. Do you have that, Councilor Mokori? I second it. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, roll call. Councilor Ingman? Yes. Councilor Callum? Yes. Councilor Christopher? Yes. Councilor Mokori? Yes. Councilor Lasorto? Councilor Farino? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Uh, Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Vecchio? Yes. Motion Manager, I have one more for you. Pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 32, and in accordance <coughs> with the Charter of the Town of Winthrop, I move that the Town Council adopt the Town Manager's proposed Lawson Rank Enterprise Fund budget, and in accordance with General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53, to be funded at three million. Oh, I'm sorry. Three hundred and twenty-one thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a Freudian slip. Three hundred and twenty-one thousand. Three hundred and twenty-one thousand forty-seven dollars. Does anyone feel there was a conflict in him making that motion? <laughs> second the motion. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Roll call, please. Council Amen. Yes. Council Callum. Yes. Council Christopher. Yes. Council Boncori. Yes. Council Lacerdo. Councilor Perino? Yes. Councilor McCarthy? Yes. Vice President Letieri? Yes. President Vecchio? Yes. 
<coughs> okay. Any other housekeeping? Um, if we just for the last announcement part, um, I talked with you about this previously, um, Council President. Um, I would propose to the council to um, coordinate with Denise the possibility of having one meeting in the month of July and one meeting in the month of August. Uh, I know a lot of people travel and um, to give everybody the flexibility to enjoy their summers. Um, there is important business to vote on, but it is somewhat slower at that period of time. Um, if you all are willing, um, I would say coordinate with the council president and Denise if we want to do that, and then in the next meeting we can announce those dates if that's the direction you'd like to go. Don't, you don't have to look right now. No, right? <laughs> do, it, do it through Denise, do it through Denise, yeah. yeah we we don't another meeting in June, we can make the yeah, It's text. Yeah. Oh, all right, okay. I'll send the dates out. Anything else? Oh, okay, public comment. Been a long couple of weeks. Uh, Vasily Malios, 90 Pleasant Street, uh, Precinct 5. Uh, I just want to point out a couple of things. Uh, November 5th, 2013 was the date that the town voted on approving the, the new middle high school. It's been five years, seven months, since we've known that that building, the old middle school site, would be vacant. Three years, 11 months, we haven't had kids in there. Where are we with this? Is there any progress? We need to generate revenue. We shouldn't have to be here coming every single year looking for money and pulling money out of line item, line item, line item to support the schools, fire, DPW, police. It's getting frustrating. I'm 30 years old. Growing into this into this town, my heart and soul is here, <coughs> and it's so frustrating to see that we can't move forward. I ask of you, please, please, we need to start brainstorming ideas to generate revenue so that we aren't so funded by the state, because what happens if the economy does fall? We see cuts. We're going to see cuts at every single department. And then we're back at the table again saying, where's the money coming from? I, I, I ask you please, there's nine of you that sit on the council. Eight. Eight. Sorry, I teach math too. Uh, we should be teaming up. We should be working with our community here. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, I know you had a, a presentation last summer regarding the development of that site. We need some follow through. We can't continue to worry about the finances and where we're going to see the hits. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? I'll just, I'm going to just respond to you, just, just give you a little background. We're not sitting and just not doing anything, okay? There's, there's a lot going on that people don't understand. There is all type of title searches being done because it's, it's part of the, uh, you know, the, the park area. Um, you know, we're trying, we're trying, we've, we've actually had several developers come in to take a look at it. Uh, the question is whether we bulldoze the whole site, including the, the skating rink, because believe it or not, when you talk to developers, that's what they want. They want the whole site. They don't want something with a restriction on it. So <coughs> yeah, there's a balancing act that we're having here with people that are concerned about sports. There's, there's a huge, you know, hockey contingent in this town. Uh, it's, it's a huge thing in Winthrop. So there's so many things at work here. Um, we had the state come in a couple of months ago. Uh, it, it, the business, uh, I, what is it? Mass Office of Business Development. Yeah, Mass, Mass Office of Business Development. We, we toured the whole site. These are the people that go out and they actually bring in businesses. But there's always been a restriction. That's, what about the skating rink? Well, the council made a vote last year to keep the, 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 the skating week separate of the site. So that has given us some restrictions, okay? It would be nice if we had the developer come in and say, okay, I'll take the whole site and I'll build you a skate, new skating room someplace else. But we haven't had that developer come in yet. So the town is working on it. It, it, it is. And one of the biggest things, believe it or not, is the title search. Because 
we know that the middle school is built where the old high school was. But prior to that, when they built the auditorium and the gymnasium, there was a question of whether or not Parkland was taken at that time. So we don't know. That's what they're looking at. So it's, it's a long, drawn-out process. I, I thank you for clarifying. Okay. Anyone else wish to be heard? Hearing none, I'm just going to give you a couple of uh, reminders that this, this coming Saturday, Winark has the uh, annual Driscoll Mohegan Invitational Track Meet uh, for Winark. It's at 10 o'clock at Miller Field. We are still looking for a member of the planning board. We have several um, applications in. We're looking for a planning board member to be considered as a citizen planner. We require you to get involved with your community, become informed, use common sense, fairness, and objectivity towards all that comes before you, which could consist of zoning, special permits, building projects, planning in general for the community's future. Your involvement in service is critical. Uh, at this time, we're looking for an applicant that has knowledgeable, that has knowledge in engineering, planning, architecture, and legal planning. Applications are online, or you can call the council clerk at 846-1742. Um, also, we're looking for two members of the library trustees. Um, that's an elected position, so if you want to volunteer and submit an application, you would have to run for election in November. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce has a, time, a town wide yard sale, 9 a.m. to 1 o'clock, this coming uh, Saturday, June 8th. Uh, on June 10th, a public hearing uh, with the Winter Planning Board with recommendations to Town Council on the zoning map. That's at 7 p.m. at the Harvey Hearing Room on June 10th. June 11th, uh, the Town uh, Manager mentioned we're going to have the ribbon cutting at the, uh, at the um, the, the public landing, Harbor Day follows at 6 o'clock, June 15th, which is a Saturday, the Strawberry Festival at the Dean Winthrop House, June 27th, the public hearing uh, continued to the Board of Appeals on a variance request at 1026 Somerset Avenue. That is at 7 p.m., the venue to be announced. And I think the town manager mentioned the Miller Field public access hours, which people are looking for. Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 8 a.m., Saturdays 1 to 5 p.m., Sundays 7 to 12. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'd like to make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye.